Good evening, welcome along to the Moda Super Series, a kind of chilled after party in the world of darts. Uh, I'm Chris Murphy, Glenn Doran alongside me. Now, I'm going to start the show a little bit differently, Glenn, because we know that the World Championship has started today. I just wanted to ask what it feels like not being there for the first time in a few years. It's an answer that might surprise you, and it's sort of uh, surprise a lot of people, but when you've had the beatings, if you think of a boxer, I've been knocked out that many times in my last 50 fights that I simply don't miss playing darts right now. I've got the new challenge of being a world senior, which I'll take very seriously. Uh, but right now, I'm not missing Ali Pali. I'm really happy to be using my brain again and enjoying the new challenge of being a pundit and commentary, and that's the honest, honest answer. And we're enjoying having you here as well. Glenn has been here all week and will be with Matthew Edgar in commentary this evening and was this afternoon when Group C got underway, which we'll take a look back at the highlights of now. Willem Mandigas led Leonard Gates 3-0 in his opening match but lost four straight legs and four straight matches. Luke Getty was a different animal from what we saw in Group A. Two wins today kept him firmly in the mix for a place at finals night. I mentioned the World Championship and Ali, pa Ali Bally Pound American Gates started strongly, winning his first two before Leonard lost his final three. Tony Newell managed three victories on a much improved day, as did Dutch debutant Jeffrey Beckhamer, who looked lost as he lost his first two before bouncing back in sensational style to end the day second in the Group C table. But it was four wins for Wales' Alex Small, who is the man standing tall at the top of the table, started the day with this one foray and finished it very strongly indeed. Yeah, so Alex Small, top of the table, which we'll take a look at now, Glenn. Uh, does he deserve to be there? It's no surprise to me that he is. I mean, even despite he's only had two wins, the headlines are still with Leonard Gates because he was such a big favourite and I predicted five out of five for him. Um, but Alec, I knew he'd be up there and he's a real talent. I know a man that you've been disappointed in, and I'm sure will be disappointed in himself, is Willem Mandigas. Just got that one win. Does it give him any hope going into tomorrow? It gives him something to aim for tomorrow, but uh, there's just no expectations from me. And uh, as much as I've tried to uh, champion him, he, you know, he is a good, good player. He just hasn't delivered this week. Yeah, pretty much open for the rest of the field, though. We'll just take a little reminder of the groups this week, uh, just to jog your memory, if you were watching earlier in the week, that Adam Warner won Group A very impressive. You've just seen the state of play in Group C, so it's Group B that we'll focus on this evening. Chris Lamman and Richard Vainsborough, who were joint second in Group A, joined by Kai Fan Lung, Nick Kenny and Rob Collins. It's time to uh, put you on the spot and see if you can out-predict primetime Matthew Edgar. Yeah, it's, it's a real... Uh, that's, that's a group of death. And, uh, and I think just listening to the interview, just seeing the guys backstage, I'm going to rule out Rob Collins right now, but only because he's probably the least I sort of know about. He reminds me of someone who, who came on the circuit and I thought he was going to do really well. Um, I'm going to champion Nick Kenny, one of the Dutchies to get through, and Kai to get through as well. There and we if you want me to nominate the uh, Dutch, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Veenstra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go then. So uh, Richard Veenstra is going to play in the first match, one of the Dutch players. Now, Veenstra was in action in Group A. He's played some decent stuff as well in the course of the week. He's going to take on Rob Collins. Uh, Veenstra has produced some very good finishers, hasn't he, and had some good moments. Uh, Veenstra is a real class act on and off the hockey. And uh, this 170, he had 164, 160. He was... He's a pretty amazing player, and uh, I hope he does really well. He's not a stone's throw about just about getting it really right, the game of darts. And as we said, Rob Collins is his opponent for the opening match in the evening. Glenn is really right. Matthew Edgar did earlier on, but let's see how he's feeling ahead of his latest glory bid here at the Super Series. Rob, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. How's your preparation been? How are you feeling about tonight? Yeah, preparation's been not too bad. I haven't put as much practice on the board due to work commitments, but um, no, I feel all right. I'm throwing well, so we shall see tonight. I know you're a busy man away from the darts, but have you had a chance to look at the group and size up the competition? No, I didn't have a clue who was here, mate, until um, my group on the WhatsApp uh, let me know. I, I don't really look, to be fair. I just come up here and uh, whoever I play against, I play against. It's as simple as that. It is a tough group, a lot of people are saying on yeah. paper. Uh, you've got Richard Veinster in the first match. What do you know about him? Have you played him before? 
I haven't played him before, but um, Chaz Barstow knows him very well, actually, on the Isle of Man. Um, he played him a few times there when we was there, but I've never played him. I know he's a, he's a good player, so I know he can perform, so we'll see what happens. And obviously the aim is to get through it Saturday night. £5,000 would be a nice early Christmas present, wouldn't it? Certainly would be, mate. I know what I'll be doing with that. I'll be flying away somewhere for Christmas, 100%. Let's hope the darts are flying tonight. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, Rob says he'll be flying away if he pockets a £5,000. He's taking on flyers in the opening match of the evening. Richard Vane for the Dutchman, who finished joint second in Group A, along with Chris Landman, who's also in action tonight. But the first one is the Man of Steel, Collins, against Veenstra in the company of Glenn Durant, who's headed downstairs to join Matthew Edgar. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, an intriguing game straight away. When you look at my predictions, they've been pretty woeful this week. Whereas my co-commentator has been absolutely fantastic, got most of them spot on. But we've both pretty much ruled out Rob C uh, Collins, a guy we both admire very much. And when he came onto the scene, we both felt the man of steel would go on to do big things. And I think uh, Matt actually made parallel with Rob Cross of, you know, he, he, that transition across that he could do really well in the game, uh, but just hadn't really materialised. But like, look at Corn and Whitehead. You know, they, where where was his game going? And then all of a sudden, he got the opportunity the Motor Super Series, and you know, and the rest is history there. And he's up against okay, Richard Vintro in Group A. Times look the best player. Game on. Um, but there is always the doubt, Matt. Uh, just the odd game. Can I, I asked the question to Matt: Why are we not seeing him in the PDC? Why are we not seeing him winning majors? And he just seems to 60. fall at the final fence each time, despite being a big favourite. Yeah, I was having a look over the data for Rob Collins. It was 2020 when he won that 60. Challenge Tour title, and that was the year when he started getting invites onto the Pro Tour. And I, I said that's when I compared him a little bit to Rob Cross. He looked like he was a sort of player that was hey, going to go on the climb. He made four board finals that year when he got his Pro Tour invites, but... He's now dropped down to a seasonal One average of just 84. And he's not really doing much in the winning sense. We played the first weekend of Challenge Tour events, and last 64 was the best he could do. And it's interesting, when we listened to 56. his interview at the start of the game, he said work commitments have not made it possible for him to practice as much. And I wonder if that is why he never moved on from 60. 2020. You could say the same of Veenstra. You know, obviously, he's got a young family them commitments that work-life balance it, it's really difficult and you know when I was on the BDO2 myself I was landing in on a Monday morning from a Dutch Open a Finder Masters a Belgium Open and you know at work nine o'clock it's very very tough people don't see that side of the game they just see Ali Pali they just see Lakeside and think the rest of it's easy so them commitments um, you know there's a Rob Collins and a Richard Vincher in every town in the UK and Holland it's just now they get the opportunity via the Moda Super Series. 56. And that there is 161. the big thing. The Moda Super Series has allowed those sort of players a platform to play for big prize money that has never really existed before. £20,000 and £5,000 for a weekly prize. It just gives you that little bit of freedom and the chance to go and play for those big prizes. You know, the World Championship is on at the moment. Tops are Collins. Game that is a great first, start mate. to the day Rob for a man Collins. who says he hasn't practiced that much. 114 finished to hold his throw, and maybe we wrote him off a bit too soon. But Second the World Championship, as I was saying, on Game at the on. moment, £25,000 is the price for making the third round phase, which means you've got to go through the whole year of One tour hundred. events, get into the top 32, beat an international qualifier, then beat one of the top players in the world, to get that prize that is available here 90. after just 13 weeks. Like you said, did we write him off too soon? Because trying to pick three from five Nine, from this group wasn't easy. You know, all five could win this, and I think we both fancy Nick Kenny as well, so it's not ideal that we both have. One of us is going to be uh, badly right or badly hey, wrong this time. Well, well, mark your card in terms of your prices for the evening. In terms of this group, Richard Veenstra is your favourite, 15 Nine, to 8. Chris seven. Landman slightly behind at the 9 to 4. Nick Kenny, the player that both me and Glenn Durant think is grossly overpriced, 
is nine to two. I think there's a oh, lot of value hundred. there in Nick Kenny. Just remember to gamble responsibly. 18 plus be gamble aware dot org. 59. Yeah, and I think Nick was a little bit insulted at that nine to two price when we were chatting to him earlier. But like I said, I wouldn't like to be a you know a betting man in in this match. It's really tough. Anyone can win this group. They're all 59. very, very talented. I called it upstairs the group of death. Well, would you like to be a betting man this week? Adam Warner. Opened the week 40 to 1, biggest outside of his now 9 to 2 joint favour with the man who is 1 0 down in this match, Richard Veenstra. We've seen some big finishes from Veenstra this week. And that leaves 88, so that perfect first marker. 100 and just sets so that alongside not. that. And we Richard, you've got 109. Certainly doubted, Rob. I don't think he feels 100% in himself. And he's 49. Looks a little bit rough in the back there, but it's tops for Veenstra. 89. And there's that Robbie one Robert millimetre 28. difference. And it's absolutely silent in there without the crowd. James on the second leg. Rob Collins. A surprising start for you. He says he hasn't been practising. He'd... Third leg, it's Rob to throw first. But the thing, he didn't feel too much hope here this week, but... Like I said, this is an opportunity to play into form as well. And it's Collins that leads against the favourite. We can often see players come into an event. We, we see it all the time when they come on stage or they get into an event and they put that adrenaline five. and they can normally hit the ground running. But can they sustain it? Because that is the big thing about the Moda Super Series. It's about sustainability. Aye, not just got to win three. one match. It's not just got to win a, a couple of legs. He's got to be able to sustain this for about a two and a half hour period. And that's where I think the big question mark's going to come oh, in for D3. somebody who's not fully practiced and fully match fit and ready. Just having a look at the throw. 40. It's a little concern for me about the, the end process, the end part of his throw which I'll keep an eye on whereas the silky smooth Richard Vinci who can look absolutely no, sensational at times he's a we use the term feast of famine but just have a look at that follow through right at the end and that grip he's got a bit of a Eric Bristow about that little finger it's doing its job but just looking at Rob Collins I've to remind myself how really good of a player he was 2019. Like I said, he uh, a pro to a, a challenge to a winner in 2020. Reached the last 16. 57. Reached, uh, the last 16 of a couple of pro tours as well. He didn't have a lot of consistency in Q school. He did reach a couple of quarterfinals, losing no, to Dan Lowby and Gary Blade. So, the talent's there, which is doesn't surprise me whatsoever. It's just feels like a bit of a forgotten man to me, but this 130 would be nice. And bull for a 3 0 lead. 99. Richard you require 36. Richard really needs to get up and running quickly. I don't think he's going to get too many chances tonight. Game's on the third leg. I think all Richard five, if you miss your doubles tonight, you'll be punished heavily. But Vinstra's back in this. And more important, that was a break of throw as well. Four flag, it's Richard to throw first. Game now on. Now back on throw. Yeah, we saw a lot of 4-0 score lines, didn't we, with Vinstra? 4 nils, 4-1s. It was, like you say, all or nothing. And it's obviously not deterred the bookies too much. They still make him favourite for this. I mean, he was the Glen Durant pick to win Group A, wasn't he? I'm a big fan. I really have. I've been a big fan for him for a long time. I just, I just hey, like I say, if, he, if he was a horse, he just seems to fall at that last fence so many times. And, uh, you know, he's missed glory when he's a very, very talented player. But it's time to Fools put up or three. shut up now. I'm sure he's going to Q school as well. I might have that chat with him if he does get the opportunity to get through to Saturday night. Like I said, he's one of them players, if he gets it right on the day, he could have a great run at, a, at Q School and get through very easily. If you remember, not too long ago, we mentioned about Rob Collins, and we hey, said, or want? I certainly said, that how will he be when that adrenaline just wears off after a couple of legs, and 
the average has already gone down by 100. seven. And it's just a sign of somebody who's not been playing as much. And like you said, the work commitments at the moment for him just meant that he's not been able to get that practice in. And it's this area Ball, when you're shooting two. around the Ready board that's really going to highlight. 40. Yeah, it's his facial mannerisms. And uh, he seems to be beating himself up along the way already. 60. That's unlucky. You might see the bullseye coming to play with the last dart here. If you just watch with every dart he throws, you just... Oh, remember he's... Uh, Richard, you require Still two one up. He's still got the darts. Double ten for two two. Game shot on the fourth leg. Double ten it is. Richard Vainstra showed some real tenacity in pulling back from there. For me, like it's to and throw this first. is just doing it with a naked on. eye and on very, very limited, get with four legs in. The arm was just moving slower in that last leg for Rob Collins. 140. With that, you can tell in the fact that you don't get the arm extension. There's a lot of focus on follow-through in darts, but the follow-through is a byproduct of a well-thrown dart. It's not a, a factor to deliver. And like you said, it was pulling up a bit short. And one of the signs of that is just that arm slowing down, a sign of tension or a, a sign of trying to be too deliberate. I do like the pullback which deaccelerates to bring the acceleration from the forward press. And when you do get that right, I think the follow through will look after it itself. But yeah, you're right. If you stand and throw a dart and just concentrate on the uh, follow through, just have, feel the pain in your elbow because I think I've tried every scenario 95. when I've been thrown so badly myself. Yeah, because what you're doing is you're taking the throw off of a muscle and you're dropping it onto the joint. Hey, T1. Obviously, we will be able to train muscles, develop muscles. But one thing we can't develop is obviously the joint. You're just going to grind that down and cause a bit of pain, a bit of nerves. So he's beginning to write Rob off. He's 66 after 12. 100. Rob, he requires 66. This is a big chance to hold his throat. Said it's when you're moving around the board, it's going to highlight, and that leaves him a non finish. 46. So, Richard Veenstra has been Richard pinging these sorts of shots all week. He likes a ton plus out, he'd love this one. Treble needed for tops, and Rob Collins got a chance. Go 3 2 up. That wasn't 40, the ideal 40. opening dart Robbie there for Richard. 20. And as much as he's shaking his head and everything, hey, he's 3 2 up with Robert Collins. Rob Collins. I was on the balcony 10 minutes ago, not giving him much hope. When I first saw him, he was last in the venue today. He just looked the best. Game he on. feels 100%. But he's 3 2 up against the favourite of the group. 60. And we had a bit of a sizable upset over at the Alexandra Palace already, haven't we? For the PDC World Championship that kicked off today. Mickey Mansell winning the opening game of that 3 1. And then Keen Barry, a 1 to 20 shot, went down to the South African Quala via Grant Sampson, who, for me, gave one of the best interviews I've seen at the Alexandra Palace. He was delighted with himself. A really, really good interview. Really shown what the World Championship means 17. in those early rounds. Well, I'll have to watch that. Yes, I was on Edgar TV earlier at 6 o'clock. Guarantee everybody that Keen Barry will win, be winning 3 0. 100. That's why I feel sorry for Nick Kenny tonight. I've said that he's going to do very well. 92 look very generous. 60. And the way my predictions have been going. 100. Like this one's going to go all the way, Matt. Yep, definitely. Uh, Rob Collins a long, long way back. Richard Veenstra. Just needs one treble to leave a double. We'll probably you require 101. With a couple of darts that he'll goes at this because Collins has left a no finish with the 165. Tops of Veenstra bends the wire. Just half the size of it. And remember in the olden days, you used to have the staples on the board and the wires used to not be bedded in. It used to sort of be on top of the wire. You could literally half the size of the double. 40. That would have definitely happened with that one. It'll feel half Game the size now. The That's a beautiful Richard dart from Richard. 
Well, it, how important is having the darts tonight in these best of seven games? Because seven from final against not an awful lot to separate on. these five. These are five quality players. When I see in this group, I was licking my lips, ready to watch this. I don't know if Matt spotted something, but he just seemed to be that adrenaline's not in his body now. And Richard will really pounce on this, and that's a lovely second dart. 94. It's unlucky for more. Yeah, when you talk about Richard and the opportunity to move on to the PDC Pro Tour, when something like this is happening, when your opponent kicks off 44 30, this is where you've got to be a shark. This is where you've got to go and hit another treble at least, ideally two. That's the perfect first half for 40. him, but that's an incredible return from there. And these are the kind of chances that we have our concerns about, Richard. He's 180 after 180 all week. Just when you need him to produce. And Rob Cross, the man of steel. He looks a real tough match player. And you don't lose that. You see the pace in the arm on that last shot there as well from Rob Collins. That's what he needs. He needs to get that arm moving quicker. Don't try and be deliberate. Trust yourself. Trust the process. Trust the work that you've done in the past to get you to this point. Believe. No worry about pace when it comes to Richard. I think every single dart he's thrown has been exactly the same. 99. Keeps himself in it. Let's cross it. That's the kind of... That second dart is probably not how he wanted to leave his finger. A beautiful setup from Collins. We thought this was going to be a good match. We thought this was going to be a great group. But the big finish in Richard Veenstra has the first match dart. Game and that's all new. Only dart it required in a Richard wonderful 1 2 7 finish in a real topsy turvy opening match of the night. And that just whets the appetite for the rest of the night. And next up, we've got the guy we both promoted, Nick Kenny, against the man of Tuesday, Chris Landman. That's up next. Don't miss that one.
Well, Richard robbed Collins in the opening match of the evening. The Man of Steel surrendering a 3-1 lead and Veinstra pinching victory. And we've got Nick coming up next. You couldn't write this stuff, could you? Or maybe I did. Uh, but Veinstra winning 4-3, averaging just over 88. Five points higher than Rob Collins, who got off to a good start. Uh, much to surprise, I have to say, of our commentary team. Great finishing as well from him, a 1-1-4 to open the match. But the 1-2-7 helped Veinstra get the game. And it is the Dutchman who is off to a flyer, ultimately. And his Dutch compatriot is coming up next, Chris Landman, uh, taking on Nick Kenny. Landman has been in action for the previous three days of the week, actually finished joint second with Veinstra in Group A, producing some decent stuff along the way. He led the way after Monday's action, uh, but ultimately lost out in the end to Adam Warner, who we'll see here on Saturday night. A second chance then for him to get through. Three from five, remember, make it through in this group. And the Welsh ace, Nick Kenny, is quite happy with his form coming into this evening's action and is hoping to be one of that trio. Let's hear from him now. Nick, welcome back to the Modus Super Series. How are you feeling about your campaign? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I've had a good, good three months, so uh, looking forward to tonight. It's a really hard group. It's probably the best group we have been in. But, um, you know, I, I like the challenge, so looking forward to it. Have you been watching much of the action on this stage and looking forward to getting onto it? To be fair, I, I flick on Twitter and have a look at the results. Um, I had a look at Alec today. He's from my county, so fair play to him, top of the group. But um, I always like to see what's going on. So, and, you, know, you know, outstanding averages or the ADC, for example, because probably have a go at that next year. So, yeah, I always have a, you know, always have a, a glance at it. And it's Chris Landman in your first match tonight. Uh, what do you know about him? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, we, we, we shared, me, Richard and Chris, we shared in Northern Ireland. We, you know, we know each other well from a WDF and BDO days. So, yeah, you know, I know, spent a lot of time with Kai recently. So the only one I really don't really spend any time with is Rob. So I know all the boys and uh, we all, we're all top talent. Enemies tonight, though. Always. <laughs> Good luck. Cheers. Well, both of these players played at the PDC World Championship last year. In fact, tomorrow will be 12 months to the day that Landman stunned our friend and colleague Scott Mitchell in straight sets. But they've swapped the Palace for the lounge this December, as have our commentary team of Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. I don't think Scott Mitchell will be impressed with that there, Chris. Being reminded of that defeat to Chris Landman. Chris Matt Landman's one of them type of players and we've seen it this week. He was masterful on Monday. Didn't do an awful lot wrong, to be honest with you, over the three days. It was a real three-way tussle with Landman, Richard Finch, who you've just seen, and Adam Warner. And, and at times, we thought Chris was going to get through. Very fluent player. Very rarely does he stray away from that treble 20. So, he's, you know, he's prone to a lot of treble 20s and big 180 scores and... Uh, but he's also, you know, uh, around the outer ring, he can definitely be improved. And he's up against the okay, first Nick Kenny, so it's this fresh first. versus Game someone on. who's been here all week. I, but they just don't look very fatigued. They're nice and fit, these Dutch lads. And already Richard's underwear should should be a cracker. Yeah, I like Nick Kenny in this group. And I like the fact that he almost felt a little bit insulted by those odds, so to speak, in terms of... His chance of getting through this group. I think he'll like the pace of the games. I think the quicker games certainly suit Nick. Well practiced coming into this. He's been playing a lot of darts around the circuits. Yeah, you see a lot of darts there. Uh, 95. I'm surprised to say that this is their first meeting because I know the, they've even sort of travelled together in Six. Ireland this year and you'd expect them both to be at the business end of opens in, in, the, in the WDF system. Uh, even going back to the old BDO days, but I haven't found a game where they've actually played each other. 49. Yeah, it's really interesting, that, when you think they both are big travellers. They both play the circuits. One I was asked earlier when I went on to the Greyhound show. They said they like getting involved in the 180s. Who's the most likely player to follow? I said Chris Landman. He has took him three visits to record his first 180. But still 100 behind. 100. Nick, we're going 92. Two options here. So that's the old-fashioned route. That would have left him a shot at the bull. That's the lose double 14. 64. Right on the wire. 
Because you're going well, 81. London's very unpredictable around this area. You can ping this in two darts. Or you can be messing about big style with 36. it. 36. And it's the latter on this wide, occasion. 28. This double 14 has been used a lot this week so far. Game normally with great first, success. Then. And Nick Kenny Nick just Kenny. adds to that column. Success on the double 14. It's confirmed to hold a throw for Nick Kenny. And he is up and running Seven on his campaign. Throw first. We'll say the hardest legs to win are the first leg and the last. Well, he didn't make that one look too difficult. Yeah, I was chatting quite frankly with Nick. He said he didn't do an awful lot at the beginning of the year. The Welsh Open were, without being too disrespectful, I think sometimes that's more of a social event than 96. such a long day. So he didn't sort of brush that one aside, but he went to Bridlington and Ireland and back end he sort of been playing straight to the Europe Cup representing his beloved Wales where he was captain. I think he did really well in the pairs in that. He was very proudly telling me. But he said he's in good shape. He said... Uh, 45. Looking forward to this week. But like you said, he said he felt really insulted at 92. He said he, he saw that he was 4-1 to one to win the actual five. tournament this week. And now all of a sudden he's 9-2. to two. And maybe that's because of the inclusion with Kai. Um, after the change with Kai, Fan Lung and uh, Luke Getty. To make this a real group of death. I suppose it all could come down one as well to the big crash in the market from the biggest outside of 40 to 1, Adam Warner, right into being jump favourite in there with Richard Veenstra. 64. Well, 9 to 2, far, far too big. And you can already see that with Nick Kenny. He just fired in his first maximum and he'll be looking with a first start like that to... Get a 140, leave himself tops, and that is the perfect execution of that plan. Yeah, this argument of coming in fresh. I was really impressed with Alex Small today. Thank you for going 40. And Nick Kenny's looking really good here. Game shot on the second. Averaging over the ton. Nick Kenny. And he hits that tops with a plum. Break a throw. That is the is Nick to throw first. Big factor there Game for Nick Kenny. Got a chance now to go 3 0 ahead. I think if you did have to say one player to go through, it was Nick Kenny the pick. And I suppose it had to be the pick, really, didn't it? When we both fancy him to potentially win this group. 100% on your Edgar Prime top tips. Have we got one for tonight in such a tough group? Really like you only look for value. I haven't got one of my top tips tonight as of yet. It might appear through the night. I'll let you know of those. But if you joined us on the Greyhound show earlier on, I did give you a little double. One of those in the double was Richard Veenstra, top finish against Rob Collins. 11 to 10. That one has landed. 100. It landed with that 127 on the right ball, the, the last shot. And the other tip as part of that nice little double was Nick Kenny to beat Rob Collins. So if you do want my prime picks, you can head on to the Greyhound show around 8.25 and you can get those. The other one I gave you was the value pick, which is the 9-2 to two on Nick Kenny to win this group. And I've just caught a glimpse of the Alexander Six, Palace. What on earth does Peter Wright look like? Well, that's really sensible because one three two you you do think of the champagne finish of the bullseye to start. Ninety two. He's playing the absolute percentages here. Nick Kenny averaging over a hundred and seven right now. Fifty nine. Nick Chris Landman, 40. who's looked absolutely brilliant at times this week. Been left in his way. Game shot on the third leg. This is great stuff Nick from Nick Kenny. Kenny. Well, like it's Chris to throw first. Game on. He said he was feeling good about his game. That 107.36 average right now. Solidifies that. Against the player who's looked like someone who wants to get there on Saturday night. I tried to pick three from five. And I went for Nick Kenny. I went for Richard Veenstra. 99. And I went for Kai Fan Lung. So I fully expected Rob Collins to win his first game Please and Chris Lambert to win this one because, like I said, I've been absolutely rubbish. He's back in that treble bed again. 
This is impressive stuff. One hundred and eighty. Wow. This is more than impressive from Nick Kenny. This is class. This is class at the very, very top level. A hundred and eleven point three eight. He is here. He is meaning business. And he is looking like he could get his group off with a four nil success. He's just hundred and twenty two points away. Fifty. Thank you for going hundred and twenty two. Yeah, this is impressive. Sometimes you talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? And he's doing things very sensibly here. Forty four. He had the opportunity there to go on the eighteens for the one two two, but once again he played a percentage that didn't work this time. But you can see his uh, thought process. One hundred and thirty eight. We've talked Did about these three dark combinations. He does have the opportunity if he hits the treble 18. But that's what we think. And fat 20. The double top. Just moving around this one. And Game as quickly as that, match. Nick Kenny Nick says, Kenny. thank you, Motor Super Series. I'm here. 92 for this group. I don't think so. I'm the man to beat. A fabulous... 105.47 average there from Nick Kenny. A wonderful start to his campaign. We see Kai Fan Lung up next for the first time against Rob Collins.
Welcome back. What a start to the night's action for Nick Kenny. A fabulous display in his opening match, resulting in a 4-0 whitewash win. And look at that, an average of 105.47, almost 20 points more than his beaten opponent, opponent Chris Landman. Four out of five on the doubles for Kenny in that one as well. An absolutely flying start following Flyers. Uh, Richard Vainstra in winning his opening match in a somewhat different style. He did that against Rob Collins, who we are about to see in action again. And Collins, well, he made a decent start to the game, took out uh, a nice 114 checkout, as you can see here, and he went on to lead this match 3-1. But Vainstra hit back and got the win in the end, a 4-3 success completed with a 127 finish for the Dutchman. So Collins looking to claim his first win of the night. Uh, against him is Hong Kong's Kai Fan Lung making uh, his first appearance of the evening's action right now. And I caught up with him a little bit earlier on. Kai Fan, welcome to the Moda Super Series. Uh, just tell us how you're feeling about your chances in this group. Oh, I'm so glad to come back to the Moda Series. Uh, I think my last time was in Southampton, so this is my first time in Portsmouth. It's a brilliant venue. Uh, tonight, the group stage is very, very, very hard. Uh, I hope I can uh, get through and then to the set day. It's Rob Collins up first for you tonight. Uh, have you played him before? Do you know much about him? Uh, to be fair, I, I, I never... I know his name, but I never played him before. But the rest of the three of the group, uh, I played him uh, quite constant this year. So it will be some... Uh, friends uh, throughout this group. And how have the darts been going for you lately? Uh, it's been good. Uh, uh, the last every week I got tournaments traveling around uh, basically for the WDF and then just to keep carry on playing darts uh, for the moment. Last week I've got good results in the Netherlands, a semi and the final, so which is good for me. But uh, depends on how, 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 how I play today. So hopefully I've got a good, good night today. And just one final question. I've noticed on the back of your shirt there. Could you just show us that, yeah, actually? Sure. Turn around, keep the mic to your mouth, and just tell us what that represents. Yeah, so this is basically a family of, of, my, of my family. You can see it's a robotic family. It's myself in the middle, and then I've got my wife uh, carrying my daughter and my dog in the down here, down here. So basically, it's basically represent my family in a robotic way. Mm -hmm. Nice touch. She'll be cheering you on, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Good luck. There we go, then the big questions get answered here at the Super Series and Kai Fan Lung, automaton family and all ready to enter what seems like robot wars against the man of steel. Let's hand you back to Glenn and Matt to talk you through the mechanics of this one. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Absolutely great to see Kai. So respectful he was as I, I passed him earlier. A really, really nice guy. Uh, fascinated to hear about his shirt there. So which one do you think is the best, the robotic family? Oh, Peter Wright's attire at the World Champs tonight. Well, just to remind yourselves, that is our world champion right there, and representing our sport in, well, I suppose the way that the sport needs to be represented, really, isn't it? He's a bit of a Grinch slash Santa slash dart player slash... Oh, I could go forever on that, couldn't we? I'm big fan, though, of the Kai Fang Lang shirt. really like that. I like the fact that he's incorporated his family with him on there. We... We often see players just like hey, writing like family Kai to name on there. This has gone a Game step on. further with what he's doing there. And he's probably had to leave them behind at times to go and chase his dream of being a professional dart player. He's doing a lot of travelling at the moment. But after this game, 59. we would have seen everybody who is due to take part in the Super Series this week. So by the end of today, we would have seen the winner of the Super Series 66. Play. Yeah, it's uh, when you when you sit here game one on Monday, it does feel like a long week ahead type thing. But just to uh, uh, the geek inside me who just absolutely loves this game of darts, just you just get to know people. I've probably played these guys, you know, fifty times between them. But do I really know any of them? But what you get to see when you're this close, all them little idiosyncrasies that they do, all the throws, the the strengths, the weaknesses. Uh, with Kai, my assessment's fairly easy with this one. I used to think he, he threw way too slowly, and he has he has sped up so much that doesn't even look like the same throw. 
that he had when he was in the um, Pro Tour game a couple of years ago. He was painfully slow. He was overthinking everything. He had a good relationship with Stephen Bunt and his practice partner was then. Um, but I've been, me and Matt have been looking at his results. The Swedish Open 2022 champion. Not an easy one to win that one. Only good Four players win five. that. <coughs> and uh, yeah, just back from the World Masters where he reached the semis. Same weekend as the World Open as well. Yeah, he played well in that World Masters. Got through his group quite convincingly. And then three averages in the mid-90s. One of them against Jella Klassen, who is the current WDF number one. And he's bringing that form here. Another tops that sat lovely in the board. Oh, I expected. I expected that one to go. That one was lovely in the board and the way he's playing. He was meant to be here for the full week. But had a few flight issues, so one swapped position hundred. with Luke Getty. Time required 20. He actually might find that's a benefit. He might be coming here a bit fresher, a bit more ready. He's certainly going to be a bit more hungry to get through to the finals. Try and make up some of that loss of earnings from missing out three days of play. No oh. score. No, it's three Robbie darts Rockwell missed out of the double there for Kai Fang. And Rob Collins picked the pocket of Richard Veenstra in the opening leg. Last match he took out 114 in this position. Won't retaliate with a 116. 42. Kai required 20. I remember watching Kai in the World Cup when he was representing Hong Kong. And his dream was to play on the... Just says, watch that. Maybe disappointed the way he's swearing these darts all over the doubles. But all he ever wanted to do was play on the circuit, and he can proudly say it. Just double ten here first for Collins. The double five. 64. Can you require four? We did say this group was stacked. We did say it was full of quality. There have been a lot of missed doubles tonight. But what can you say about Nick Kenny? He was absolutely unbelievable. No score. Well, Kai, Robbie Kai has beat 10. Nick Kenny. He has the game to get through game this competition. The first leg. So he's going to have to Rob improve Collins. on the doubles on the outer ring there. And it's a little shake ahead from Rob. You'd be surprised, but after losing Second his first game when he had chances to win. Game on. We mentioned the... World 60. Masters run that he made to the semi-final. He mentioned also he made the final. That was in the World Open, a WDF event that happened alongside the World Masters. He made the final of that event, and along the way, reaching the quarterfinals, One he only lost three hundred. legs, which is very impressive when you think that he started in the round of 256 and lost three legs in his five victories to get him to the quarterfinals. Beat Dan Lowry in that quarterfinal. Some will see... Just a couple of weeks ago here at the Super Series, James Horrell in the semi-final, another player we've seen regularly down here in the Super Series. He lost the final 5-3 to Benjamin 121. Yeah, A year ago, Kai was playing in the PDC World Championships. Four times he's played at the UK Open. He's represented One Hong Kong in the PDC World Cup. He's played on the Euro Tour stage in Belgium. And in the International Open, he's got a great C great CV and he's doing real damage in the WDF right now. 140. Robbie I'm sure Robbie he has dreams and aspirations of getting back in that top 128 on the Pro Tour. But right now he's appreciating the opportunity here at the Motor Super Series. Can we require 140? Uh, Rob Collins got a choice on 60. his hands here. Does he Robbie go straight for the double 19? Does he split? He strikes me as the sort of player that's just going to go straight for everything. Every day I just say, have it. He looks like one of 30. them two players. He went 2-0 up in his first Robbie game against Feenstra. Can Kai steal this one? Because you feel it should be 1-1. One, one. He just wants it. Make sure he doesn't get a little nick off that first no dart. That was score. the concern there. Just the way that first Robbie dart was sitting. Eight. So a few problems for Kai early doors. Rob has chances to capitalise. The second leg. That double two has been Collins. delightful for many of the players this week. And that continues for Rob. Delegate Kai to throw first. Game on. 
with the best of seven, a two-nil lead can seem a long, long way. So you just have to focus on every single leg here. Sixty. Keeps looking at his hands. If you are interested 60. as well, we've just seen Peter Wright take a one set to nil lead over at the World Championship. The defending World Champion kicking up his campaign against Mickey Mansell. He's already got a win tonight against Ben Robb. Yeah, we said about Mickey Mansell. How will he feel if he goes 58. home tonight? 15 grand richer, but out of the tournament day one after winning a game. And you felt like he won't even remember that first game. The only thing will be disappointment. 56. But losing to right. It's the worst position in the World Championship, I think, when you play the defending champion. If you get that win, and then you're out of the tournament before it's even really started, despite the fact you've won a game, it, I can't imagine what that feels like. Hey, it's I can't imagine what it feels like not winning a game. I've done that a few times at the... World Championship. I'm saying now. Thought I'd say it first before you did. 140. Both well below par, so them big 140 scores will feel doubly good. I expected Kite to really come out the blocks. Like I say, just looking at his 96. stats. He actually looks a man really in form. I don't think it'd be too much disruption. He missed this flight from Holland because he was meant to be in Group A this week. Hence the reason Kai and Luke Getty change places. So I think he'd be as frustrated as anybody. At this very, very poor start. Forty two. One eight five here. You might use the twenty five bed there. Fifty three. Guy require one hundred and sixty. Just one in three darts for Robert, just not leaving his hands like he'd want to. Guy's not really punishing right now. He needs that treble here. Sixty. Robbie very well thrown darts, but no, very little reward. So you didn't see the one three two from Nick Kenny on the bullseye. We've still got the opportunity to set this up very nicely. 74. Need a spark, Kai Kai fan. Is this it? Is this the moment? 100 finish. Two darts at the top. He comes across just to open up the bed. He's close. Tens. And another two darts have gone. That is 10 well, we missed darts at the double for Kai Fang. And you fear the worst here because if this goes, it is a 3 0 lead. From Game Rob Collins. On the third and Kai Fan, we know he's better Rob than Collins. this. I've just looked at the WDF World Ranking System at the moment. Some a system he's playing quite a lot in. He's actually sat ninth in the world well, rankings for the WDF, which first. does mean Game he booked himself a place at Lakeside as well. So he'll have a chance to go for their world championship. The the Lakeside one's something you know quite well, actually, Glenn. I don't like to talk about Lakeside. 80. You know, mate. Very humble. Never talk about my achievements. Oh, Lakeside, did you say? Yeah, Kai, I was thinking Penny for your thoughts there, Kai. Because I think this is the... I don't think he 69. expected this at all. It's just that opening game syndrome. You know, if you can get two points on the board quickly. Especially, really, putting Rob right down, who would have played two, lost two. 45. It's not saying it's over yet. Definitely a different throw from the Kai fan, I remember. It's obviously working for him because he's actually playing well this year. He's in the top 10 of the ranking system, as is Chris Landman. Chris Landman, 70 in the ranking system. Someone who we've got here with us this week. I'll try to get hold of Kai because he has played in the Moda Super Series before at Southampton. And, uh, 43. There has been that thing where it doesn't really give you much of an advantage because it was totally different to the setup here in Portsmouth. And some players have tra transitioned very well. 42. And some it's felt like a debut. This is quite painful for the pair of them right now, but for Rob, a 
I've used this term a lot. Just keep it simple. No head shakes. You've got total One control hundred. of this match. It's just a case of seeing now, and I just don't think he feels 100% in himself. He doesn't feel 100% in himself, but he'll certainly feel happy to have points on the board. Which 90. He's just one leg away from doing so. Kaifan is offering very little in terms of resistance at the moment. Came out the traps really well. Looked one, like he was going to take that 1-3-1 one, one on the tops, tops. And it all went wrong, but there is the first sign of intent from Kaifang Lang. He hits a 180. And we, we call him Kaifang, actually. He used to like being called Kevin. 40. Call you require 50. Yeah, I remember that. Game show the four flag. He said he needed Coins a spark, look. Matt. They're both coughing there. Good job it's not boiling hot. Looks like it's quite a throw. Well, the there. venue's perfect tonight. Game on. I don't walk in there. Some of them morning sessions can be a little bit nippy. The conditions up there are perfect. We've spoken an awful lot this week about opportunities, pathways for amateur players. Now there's so much out there for people. For players and five grand One to the winner this week. Please come and join us on Saturday night, the final Saturday night of 2022. Tickets are absolutely free at dartshop.tv. You mentioned he used to like being called Kevin. Can you remember what his nickname was? I don't think he's got it on his shirt, or he might just have it there just underneath his name in small writing. But can you remember the, the nickname of Kevin? 41 Hong Kong Fooey. It was Fat Beauty. Fat. Oh, too. There it is. What's all that about then? I haven't got a clue. I yeah. don't know where it came from. 40. Well, you can't tell half a story. Well, I completed like, I me I a question <laughs> without knowing the answer. I, t I told you the answer. I told you his name. 56. You know, he doesn't have to be precise. You know, Rob Collins, he's not made of steel, is he? That's some design. And a lot of thoughts gone into that. Lovely guy. I'd say he'd give me a firm handshake earlier, but he was bowing to me. I was a little bit embarrassed. Why don't you bow to me? 98. Can you require 170? Ninety. Well, we was just starting to show signs One of alarm for Kai. Point require eighty. And all of a sudden, he's starting to find a little bit of form. We said earlier, it just needs a spark. Was that one eighty? The spark Game in the Jordan moment. Because he's certainly polishing up these Kai finishes a lot look. better. And he's really chomped into this lead now. And it's almost saying to Rob Collins, hey, over to you. Can you hold your Super throw? Because if not, throw the Kaifang average is going up. And it's going up at quite a rate. He's put around about 10 points onto his average in the last couple of legs. 60. And Rob Collins is staying around about the same place. If this trend continues, it will be a victory for Kevin. I'm just trying to look at 100. Rob Collins because I was intrigued to see he was very late coming to the venue today, knowing he was on first and third, and probably not feeling great himself. For some of the reasons, but he has opened a 2 0 lead up in the first one, a 3 1 lead in the first game. He's had a big lead of 3 0 in this game. And right now, you'd have to say that Kai's becoming favourite despite the fact he's 3 2 behind. Do you know what, actually? I had a little look earlier at the stats, and I don't just like looking at an average. I like looking into the patterns of the averages to 95. see exactly how it breaks down. And actually, Rob Collins, when trailing, his average drops, which tells me, as soon as it doesn't start going right for 45. him, he's not got that resilience to be able to just ride with the blows. We both felt he could have been a... A Rob Cross when he sort of came into the game, didn't we?
60. He just uh, burst onto the scene. Forty. Chance for Collins. And it's his dart in this line. And you feel if he loses this leg, he would become second favourite. But right now, one hundred. He has the ascendancy. With Kai on 275, you might see the bullseye come into play on the last dart. One hundred and thirty-four. Rob, you've got one hundred and sixty. Considering the position he was in there, and that's the perfect dart for Rob. One hundred and forty. You see the grip between the teeth. Then he knows this hasn't been pretty, but he knows it's also an opportunity to get his first points on the board, and he doesn't want to find himself getting cut adrift. And Kai Fan can't do anything here. And Rob Collins, you can see at the back, the second he missed, the head went down and the preparation began from that point. 93. Robbie required 20. For the match. No score. Kai required 48. Take your pick. 16. Or tops. He chooses the 16s. Been a lot more polished on the doubles since the hey, early legs. He continues that trend Try and he's got an opportunity to completely flip flop this game around. We saw earlier a 3 0 lead get turned around. Seven from final leg. It's Kai to throw first. Kai fan. Game on. Add to that column. One leg away. He's also one leg away from losing. I would fear if Rob Collins loses this game because he could and should be walking off with four points by now. He was in total control against Veenstra. He was in absolute control 59. against Kai Fan. And if Kai holds his throw here, he'd be walking off with nil point. Nil point. My Eurovision effort there. 140. You was on Eggheads, weren't you, not so long ago? I don't talk about my uh, successes. Humble, very humble man, me. 97. Okay, about 80 ahead here, plus these. In a match, he never looked like winning. The averages are nothing 55. really to write home about. It's just purely about getting those two points on the board. They're nothing to write home about in their entirety and in their conclusion. Nine, but nine. I think you'd certainly make a couple of sentences in there that Kai Fan started extremely poorly, but has rose the average. He's put 10 points on it since being 3-0 down. I think that's a big telling factor because that's the sign of somebody who's hey, been playing three. regularly and just has a little bit of form that they can just trust themselves to get themselves out of a sticky situation. 58. 126 points to go for Kai Fan, and he's completely turned this around. He will get six darts at this, so he might not use the ball if he gets the treble. Not that treble. He'd be looking at treble 18 now, Matt. 58. Not great, but it's okay. And a 140 here would make it interesting. 58. I've got enough of 16 for t double top. And for the match. Game In show. A match that Rob match. Collins was leading 3 0. It's Kai Fan Lung who takes the spoils with a 4 3 victory. For Kai, it was just about getting the two points on the board. For Rob Collins, it could be a very, very long night. Next up, Richard Veenstra, Nick Kenny. Both won the first games, not to be missed.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And you are very welcome to join us here Saturday night, the last one before a break for Christmas. Tickets available via dartshop.tv, absolutely free for the party here in Portsmouth. Dishing out Christmas presents so far, though, early ones is Rob Collins, So it's all going wrong for in Group B tonight so far. In his first match of the night, Collins led 3-1, he lost 4-3. In his second match, he led 3-0 and lost 4-3. That to Kai Fan Lung, who was a grateful recipient of those gifts, coming back to win and take the two points in his opening appearance of the evening. Uh, but next up, we've got a couple of players who have already played and who have already won. Richard Veinstra was the man who came back against Collins in the first match of the night. The Dutchman completing the comeback win with this 127 and game. Landing the bullseye to complete the checkout. And as for Nick Kenny, well, he produced the performance of the week so far, averaging more than 105 in a whitewash win over Chris Landman. And to navigate past a bit of a blocker, but found a clear path and found a 4-0 win and a very, very good display. Now, the pair of them actually met in the World Masters just last week. Kenny winning that one en route to the quarter finals. One apiece in their head to head overall. And of course, one win apiece this evening. Something's got to give. Let's find out which way it goes in the company of former World Master Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. I'm sure he's the master of something. I'm sure he'll tell us what it is. A master of boringness. I can assure you. No, I'll tell a lie. I think any, any winding up of. Uh, Matt's over now. I've enjoyed his company this week. He's doing a professional job. He's doing great with all the stats and everything. I like to think we're working well, but we love interaction. We love chatting. We both love social media. We'd love to hear from you. We're getting some Twitter updates, which we'll try and bring along. We're prepared to answer absolutely anything, but I will stick my punditry responsible responsibility on the line and say this game will be yeah, an absolute like it's cracker. To throw first. They played only last game week on. actually and it was a 5-4 game in the World Masters and Nick Kenny said at that point he felt he was going to go on and be graced as the World Master because he totally respects Richard Vinch and he was a guy who was in the draw. If I can get past him I can go on and win it. And just a, a me 105 average in Nick Kenny's first game. So this has all the ingredients One to be an absolute drama. Before the off, as always, we had a little look at the odds, and you were very surprised by the price. No, Are you willing to give Nick Kenny the first dozers top tips? No, because I like Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I predict him to win? I'll leave the predictions to you, because fair play, you've been great. And I know people are tuning in for your next... Prime top tip. Prime picks. Prime picks. Well, I'm joining the Greyhound show. Obviously, we get our predictions on the World Championships as well over on Wicker TV. Peter Wright was one of the picks for that. He's one leg away from getting through the first hurdle at the moment against Mickey Mansell. 140. Richard, you've got 120. Never mind, Peter Wright. This is an absolute cracker of a start, this. And Bullseye. 99. Nick Raguire, 88. We might see the bullseye again in this combination finish. Oh, but not a flicker of emotion. 72. A Richard younger Maguire, Nick Kenny 25. would have shook his head at that point and, then, and highlighted his disappointment. That's a sign of maturity for me. Is he going to be Game rewarded? He isn't. Because sometimes Vainstra. just when you think you've got Richard Veenstra, 
can pull that data when you least expect it. Second leg is Nick to throw Which first. It was a slight Game favourite, on. probably because he had the darts in this match. There's absolutely nothing to separate them. The head to head, the 1 1. 2019, Richard Veens to beat Nick Kenny in the Fave Video V8. World Trophy. I really enjoyed that one. I beat Darius Lavanowskis in that one in the final. Moving on. So, <laughs> have you heard of him? And Richard. 140. Uh, got his, um, Nick got his own back, as I said, in the World Masters, but nothing to separate these two. Yeah, don't speak about him round here. He said a younger Nick 60. Kenny would have reacted in a way. If my memory serves me right, didn't you play Nick Kenny at Lakeside one of the years when you was big favourite in like the first round or something? Yeah, 100. I checked out on 161 or 164, 167 in the very first leg, but inside I was, that was one of the toughest games. You know, when you talk, what's the word you've used this week? When people have got the eyes on you. Expectation. 100. Expectation. I keep forgetting that word. But well, I like that when the expectation on me, I dominated the BDO that year. I was the reigning champ, but I actually won 60. pretty much all my titles in 2000. And I think it was 2018 I played him. Uh, and the crowd were unbelievable. A lakeside stage on the opening day and the final is, it's up there with uh, it's up there with Blackpool for me. Fee I never really got the same feeling at Ali Pali because it's, it's more like a sport. It's like an event where you could just sense the tradition when you go to Lakeside, and it was a really tough 60. game. And Nick always says to me, and I think I won quite convincingly, but if you scrutinised it, it was only a double here and there. Away. I think a couple of the sets were 2-2. Two -two. And he always said, if, buts, and maybe I would have beat you. 140. Richard, you've got 140. Yeah, and and day, uh, sorry, Matt. And that day I became a big fan of him and stayed in touch and... He does ask me for my advice sometimes. 65. And the first thing I would say to him now, Matt, is I was impressed the fact he didn't let that first leg get him down. Yeah, he's bounced back pretty well here. 16 for the bull. Bullseye. 60. Then. Richard Vainstra used to win his Richard opening match. 127 finish. They're very good on these finishes today. He was 50% on his Games doubles in his opening the second game. Leg. And he's two Richard from five in here. So he's tightened up his finishing, and Nick Kenny's not been able to so continue like the to sort of first. domination game that on. he had in that opening game against Chris Landon. But he's averaging 96. And I'll just cast my mind over for the last 100. time to Alexandra Palace and let you know that Peter Wright is through. A 3 0 victory over Mickey Mansell. He has booked his place in round three, and he can go and have. A nice little Christmas break before coming back for the big bit. 135. Yeah, this Christmas dinner will taste better, that's for sure. I was asked the question by Chris 140. Murphy. 140. Am I missing the world? And we had the little chat earlier, and I'm absolutely not. I feel like a boxer who's been punched in the face a hundred times uh, with defeat after defeat, and right now I'm very, very happy where I'm sat. 85. I'll get myself prepared for the seniors. You mentioned Christmas dinner. Is it Brussels sprouts or no Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts probably my favourite thing on the plate. Oh dear. Oh yeah. I'm surprised you don't. Listen to the snoring from your backside this week. 40. Yeah, Brussels sprouts, my favourite. This Richard, is a, you require 138. This is a great contest, but it's once again, you can look at all the stats in the world. This is what it's all about. 94. Just getting them checkouts there. That two from five for Richard. And Nick is getting opportunities. Not many, because there's nothing to separate these usually. But surprisingly enough, it's 60. Richard Vinch has got a, 44. Have a couple of darts at a double for a 3 0 lead. He's actually got six darts here from 44. There's one thing his doubling stats have suggested today. He's not going to need to use them all. We expect to see Richard Veenstra take a 3 0 lead here, which would be very ironic of the Richard Veenstra week. 120. Look for the ball there, and Richard require 32. On the floor. 120 floor there for Nick Kenny. Game shot on the third. That's that last start finish. 
I'm not going to show you as a dark blue when you stood behind. It hurts trebly more when the when and dark is the last Nick one. To throw first. Game on. I think we're all relatively surprised that Richard's 3 0 up here, but no emotion from him, and you never will. Forty-four. The bookies could hardly separate these two. But they did go for Richard. I'd be surprised if they thought he could win this game 4-0. 140. A lot of his games have been 4-0 this week, haven't they? Either for or against. It's I've never seen anyone be so opposite ends of the scale on such a consistent basis. It would just top my pundit even more that I tip Richard Vincher to win group A. And he's the guy that is beating my tip for Group B. 45. Nick Kenny. We've got Edgar's top tips and Dozer's not top tips. 85. Dozer's, please don't listen to these tips. Tips. Five. Just a sign of a lack of concentration there from Richard. Is he already thinking of the next leg where he'll have the darts? Fifth. Back that Nick hasn't punished that though. A maximum here. He'll really put the cat amongst the pigeons. But that genuinely One happens, hundred. doesn't it? Where certain players will actually just dismiss a leg when it's not going the way. Go, I'll just go to the next one. James Wade is someone that instantly comes to my mind. Can you think of any other sort of examples of players who would just sort of dismiss a leg in this sort of situation? Me. 81. Better from Nick. It's a dart he likes, 40. that one, Richard. Normally just sits above one, that. 101. Nick, Nick Kenny looking good for his first leg in this match. Yeah, the dart He'll Richard Beamstra won't like would be that last one, wouldn't it? It slipped in the one, put him onto a non-finish. Gives Nick Kenny plenty of opportunity here and time to get his first leg on the board. So only had two darts at a double so far in this match. 78. The, Nick, you required 56. The for Nick Kenny at the moment is the Richard Beamstra average is sliding. Yeah. Thirty-six. Incredibly. Richard, you require ninety-three. We could have a dart to win this match. That leaves eighteen. So double seven. Fourteen. And Game that's it. Done and dusted. Match. Richard Beecher in a Bainshaw. surprise four-nil victory over his good friend Nick Kenny, who averaged over a hundred and five in his first game. It's two from two for Richard Veenstra. He'd be happy with that. Next up, it's his good friend Chris Landman against Kai Fan Lung. Up next.
Well, Nick Kenny was out of this world in his opening match of the evening, but brought back down to earth with a bump in his second. A 4-0 whitewash win in his first, an average of 105, and then 20 points below that level in his second match, and a 4-0 defeat at the hands of Richard Vainstra, who has now doubled up with victories on the first night of action in Group B here at the Super Series this week. Uh, if you are just joining us, I know a few of you may have been watching the start of the World Championship. I'm just going to recap the results so far. So I mentioned that Vainster had won both of his matches. The first one was 4-3 against Rob Collins, who led 3-1 in that one. Then Kenny got that 4-0 win against Chris Landman. Uh, Kai Fan Lung beat Collins 4-3. Collins led 3-0 in that one. And then that 4-0 win for Vainstra, which you've just seen. So Landman now looking to get his first leg and his first win against Kai Fan Lung. Chris has been in action all week at the Super Series, having participated in Group A, where he finished joint second and produced some decent stuff, including some tidy checking out the Dutchman producing this 120 Shanghai shot against his countryman. Veenstra earlier on in the week, but it was a Kai Fan comeback in that previous match I mentioned against Rob Collins, who has twice seen his leads overturn tonight. That 80 checkout en route to a 4 3 win, and the man from Hong Kong now looking to double his points tally for the night, while Landman looking to get off the mark. I'll hand you back to our commentary team of Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. I couldn't decide when you asked me which three from five today. I was quite clear that Veenstra would get through and Nick Kenny. And this was the decision I had to make. Now Kai, after his first game, can find himself very fortunate to be on two points because Rob Collins was 3-0 up at one stage. Whereas Chris Landman was on the brunt of a 105-plus average from Nick Kenny. He was absolutely outstanding his opening game. Clash of styles here. Chris to super first. quick. The Game super flow and Chris Landman, who shows very little emotion, and you won't see him far away from that treble 20 bed, despite where he throws. 100. Against Kai, who uses the board. His board management is far much different to Chris Landman, and his pace is a little bit slow, though. I must highlight that Kai is definitely speeded up from the last time I was up close and personal watching him. Well, this could be a, an intriguing game. 96. Very intriguing it will be. Two players who are in the WF top 10. The number nine versus the number seven. 57. Both players have qualified for Lakeside. The WF World Championship will be taking place. Some point around about the April time. And I would expect both these players to go to Q school. I wonder if it'll be the same as last year when those players get the opportunity to go to Lakeside or if it'll be back to the old rules where if one of them get a card, they will not get that opportunity. Yeah, I remember Kai representing Hong Kong in the WDF system. And he had dreams. And just looking at his performances over the past few years you know he's played at the highest stage he's played on the pro tour uk open Euro Euro tours. you know he's done everything he wanted to do it's a big commitment to come over it's double 10. chris landman oh, without well, repeating myself can score for fun but can have difficulties on the outer ring and that trend sort of continues and Kai will be putting pressure on this tent. So any Eight, thoughts of him seven. splitting it? Required ten. I think it will be a case of going straight for it, but purely because of his love of tops. And Game double two once again is left. kind. And if you've been with Landman. us since Monday, that's probably the most common double that's been hit this week. Second leg, it's Kai to throw first. Game on. My fan did manage to turn around a very bad position which 60. she was in with Rob Collins was 3-0 down in that game 
I don't think he's going to get the same luxury if the same thing happens here with Chris Landman. 140. Just dropping low a little bit at the moment with these early darts. Hey, he just throw quite a long dart, doesn't he? It's like a bit of a javelin, that one. Almost like a... Like Danny Noppert, doesn't he? He seems to throw quite a long dart with this kite flight 100. on. 100. Kai Fang, very, very similar in, in his setup. We'll have a look at that dart here. Yeah, there's Matt Aluda too. Chris is number seven in the WDF rankings. Nine, and Kai six. is nine. They've met twice this year. And both in semi-finals. In the Northern Ireland match play. It was Chris that came out on top four, One three. On a hundred and eighty. The Swedish Open, which Kai actually went on to win. He beat Chris in the semis four two. So once again, we always knew this group was going to be tight. And statistics back that up. One hundred and eighty. Christian McGuire eighty one. Test the tonsils of Owen Binks there. Back to back one eighties. Fifty-six. Kai require eighty-three. Doesn't get much closer than that. Well, it's eighty-three for Kai. So we're looking at treble seventeen. And we'll use the sixteen bed now. And then we'll have more joy than Chris did. Fifty-two. You can see his Chris disappointment there. You don't need my commentary. So twenty-five for Landman. Can he improve this outer ring? Game show the Issues, yes, it's an area of the board Chris he doesn't Landman. particularly like, the 16s and 8s. The last start will feel really good. And after losing its opening game 4 0. I feel like it's Chris to throw first. And Matt's talked about game not one. only is it a loss, but the legs might come in consideration a little bit later. So a big 4 0 win here for Chris would be very much appreciated. Mentioned about the the back to back 180 calls there from our referee Owen Binks. 140. Did you have a favourite 180 call? <sighs> yeah, when I was in the BDO, I um, when I went to the Grand Slam at the Civic Hall. 26. And, uh, and Russ Bray was on, and uh, yeah, I actually looked over to my family. It was it was against Gary Anderson. I lost the game five four, but I didn't care. One, I was playing Gary Anderson, and two, I had Russ Bray calling it out. 60. Yeah, it was a big moment and probably just shows you where I was right then. I was looking in, in awe of the PDC players and the product, as is what I remember. 60. Played in front of a World Masters final against um, Adam Smith, near in front of 50 people. And here I was a couple of years later playing in front of 12,000 people in Dublin. So, yeah, big difference. 83. I suppose you've not been used to playing in front of 50 people if you look at your standard exhibitions. I'm, you know, I'm getting a steady 80 now. 78 family members and two ticket holders. Or did they win them in a raffle? Or did they get them in the bingo for one line? Hey, I tell no, you what, I'm in too. Germany all next year on the Power Tour with Terry Jenkins and Colin Lloyd, Tony O'Shea. That will fit and look forward to that. I do enjoy my team then. I've got a week in Ireland, uh, 10 days in Ireland with Phil Taylor. I think I'll be playing second fiddle to that. Bull for Kai again. And that was even no, worse than the first one. attempt. We should record 132. You might see a couple of bull attempts here. There's one. He doesn't usually show much emotion. That's about the 80. most you're going to get from Chris Landman. Well, he requires 35. Time for a pop, pop finish. Stud late is massive. Already a big dart in this match. Game shot in the third. He's up like to the challenge. That's a look. great dance for Kai. He was 3-0 down in his opening game. 2-0 down in this one. Four flag, it's Kai to throw first. Where does Dart here? Game on. He has the opportunity to get it to 2-2. Two -two. If you are just joining us because you've been watching the PDC World Championships, good evening. And one thing I want to point out, something we spoke about a little bit this evening, is that shirt of Kai fan. I'm a big fan of the marketing, the branding of different players, but 
That shirt of Kanye D5. Robots on the back of it are there to represent his family. One of them is him, his wife, his dog. So they're all represented in a robot form. I'm, I might be speaking completely out of turn. This is where I show you my age now, so I understand how you feel with this. And I, I believe they're, they're like the anime. And that's all about like cartoony drawings and things. Maybe it's a, an anime sort of setup. A lot of thoughts got into it. He was very proud showing it off earlier. 140. It's much better, Dad. He's taking a couple of legs each game so far to, to get involved. That's a dangerous commodity, really, when it's a best of seven game. Hey, T3. And Chris Lamman, I don't think, is appreciating the more slower pace of Kai. I think Chris really appreciates when he's playing a Richard Veenstra. When he's playing an Adam 58. Warner. 58. Well, that is Chris Landman's next game. It's Richard Veenstra. And that one could be quite interesting because Chris lost Nine, his opening game two, 4 nil to Nick Kenny. But coming up after this game is the second part of Prime Picks, which I gave out on the Greyhound show earlier on. The first ones came in. If the double lands, it will be Nick Kenny 58. taking the victory over Rob Chris Collins. 144. Fair play to Mr. Edgar. His tips are 100% uh, this week. 128. Unlike mine, before he says it. That's advantage landman now. This one to wait has suddenly become really difficult. See, look at treble 80. He's still got a chance. With treble 20 for the bull. Well, he's been absolutely rubbish going for bull so far. 103. That was better. Christian requires 16. Big chance for landman. Doesn't like this side of the board usually. No score. As Only shown in diagram 25. B. If this goes in and he wins this game, Kai, I might feel that the luck is on his side this week because he's actually playing ball, very, right? very well. So while he's taking these opportunities when you're not playing so well, all of a sudden he will kick in. Fifth leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. We turned around 3 0 deficit in the last game. 100. The interesting part about that was he actually missed 10 darts at the doubles in the early phase, and then he just 100% from there. 100. And he is really warming to the task now. Average moves up towards the 90 mark. You see. Fires in his second maximum of hey, the game, the third three. in total, Landon with one. Yeah, it's a fabulous week, Andy. Semi-final of the Masters and a final of the World Open. You probably would have snapped your hands off, but when you get to them semi-finals of the Masters, 40. it just sort of comes on you. you know, I remember going to Hull and thinking, my God, I'm in the quarter-final against Martin Phillips here. You know, all, then you start thinking of all the names on that unbelievable trophy. Great one to win. Bob Anderson winning it three times. That was all one of my special moments. The way he no, pointed at the board. And get out of there. I believe Bob Anderson will be taking a place in the World Seniors Championship in no, a couple of months time. The Circus Tavern. Tickets available on dartshop.tv. You'll also be joined by Glenn Durrant. 250 to 1, you said I am. 105. To win a leg. Which require 88. The cheek. And double 7. 74. Guy require 80. I don't know about you, but Chris doesn't look as focused or as he was at the beginning of the week. He was unbelievable Monday morning. It's double ten for Kai. And you, oh, there's the emotion. Game show on the fifth leg. I don't know if you got a, a clip look. of Chris there. He knew exactly what was happening once that treble 20 went in. It's so frustrating when you've been the better player in the game Super and you look at the scoreboard. First. All of a sudden, you're three on. down. And probably what hurts even more is the fact you were 2 nil up. But we're learning here, aren't we? We're learning about Kai Fang. We're learning that He's one of those players that just doesn't give up. As long as there's a little bit of hope, 
he is still in the game, and I think the one thing you've got to say is you've got to kill him off quite early. Kai went through a period where the proto was really hurt him. You know, you when you're going on that brutal circuit and you're losing week in, week out, it does Six. take your time to, to get away from the game and go and recoup and decide on a new path what you want to do. And he's been very, very successful in that. You know, to be ninth in the rankings 45. of the WF, he'll be able to grace the lakeside stage. Defend on what he does at Q school. Interesting to see that players are now considered not going to Q school because One, of the partnership with the uh, ADC in the Motor Super Series now. People are seeing real opportunities. One, yeah, and you've just got the feeling there, Chris just threw them out of got order, order a little bit of frustration thinking, how have I lost this game? Play frustrated then, Chris, if you're going to hit yourself a maximum, but he might not have much more opportunity in this game. Double. 18 for a 1 2 1 finish for the match. Three. Christopher Corn, 100 12 dart leg to wrap things up. Kai Fang Lang upped his average to a 92 and a half. One He's starting to find his Kai best. Require 18. All he needs to do now find one more dart. Double nine. The target. That sat quite nicely. Just shuffles slightly over to the side. Moves even further over. No, I expected score. that to go. Creature required 36. Game shot on the sick flag. Chris Landman. Big moment. Not just in this match, but potentially in this group. For us, these were the two Seventh players that final are going to be Chris battling it out for one of those qualifying Game places. On. We expect Veenstra to go through. We expect Collins to go um, uh, Nick Kenny, sorry, one to go through. But that is a third 180 for Chris Landman. It is six 180s in this match, three apiece. And I'm going to ask you just to think about Kai there. So, Nine what happens? He misses darts for the match. He then looks at the floor, he doesn't look at once at Chris, who quickly throws his darts. And you hear the tone of Owen shout of 180. It's an awful feeling. Because Chris is up and running here, 181 after six darts. Yeah, he's motoring to the finishing line. 85. And he had a 180 at the back end of the last leg as well to give him that opportunity. Just when you think, well, when you say, what well, he's getting frustrated, does he speed up a bit? Does he think attack? 86. Whatever he's thinking, it's right. Landman's to lose now. I think Kai might be thinking I got away with murder in the first game. So maybe two points after two games is the rightful figure. Fifty-five. He set that up nicely, and all Kai can do is put some pressure on that tops. Has to be a treble. Oh, when he slipped into the one. Crucial required. Now six starts for the match. Twenty. There's half of them. What can Kai Fan do now? He would love to find a couple of trebles as Landman is just stretching out the shoulder at the back of the stage. He is getting tight and tense. He has played three days of action Four, so two, far. One. He's got 20. probably a lot more time than he expects. That no the ring continues to Point be a problem. I won't believe his luck, but he hasn't done himself any favours with his last two visits being 41 apiece. But it's 1-3, he's not going to do it again, so it's three more darts for Landman. Who opened up with a 180-140 in this leg. And he's just dipping far too early to the line. 98. And you feel the feel this is going to be his last chance. It's a long way away. Game but in the match, the match, that Chris Lamman had firm Chris control Lamman. of 2-0. Kai Fan Lung then had match darts to win that game. But it's Chris Lamman who got a little bit scruffy at the end. But he'd be absolutely over the moon to get up and running tonight.
A big 4-3 win over Kai Fan Lung. Next up, Rob Collins, Nick Kenny. Welcome back. I'm joined by Glenn Durant for a quick reflection on what we've seen so far tonight at the Super Series and Kai Fan Lung losing that last match 4-3. But as you mentioned towards the end of the commentary on that, he's kind of had it both ways so far this evening, hasn't he? Yeah, it? it's been sublime to ridiculous at times, this group. And uh, yeah, I think two points are probably right for Kai right now. Yeah, Chris Lamman winning the game uh, despite missing 17 darts at double during it. And we're going to take a look at the league table for the first time. Everybody has played a couple of matches. Vains were the only one to win them both. Yeah, typical. The guy I've been championing all week. I changed my mind tonight and went for Nick Kenny, of course. But yeah, Richard Vinch is a class act. In fact, all five are class acts. It's a tough, tough group. Uh, Rob Collins could have been top, couldn't he? He's led 3-1 and 3-0, but not got a win yet. I don't think he's feeling 100% and just getting over that finishing line can sometimes be the hardest thing, but he could be sat on the four points easily. Well, Vainstra can carry on this perfect run at the start of the night so far. He takes on his fellow Dutchman next uh, in Chris Landman. Now, the pair of them are playing for the fourth time this week. Uh, they've both beaten each other. Vainstra winning their meeting on Monday which I think we're going to take a quick look at right now. And Landman. Oh. 
Oh, apologies, I got completely the wrong match here. <laughs> it's Rob Collins taking on Nick Kenny. I'm, I'm a game ahead, Glenn. Uh, so Nick Kenny, well, what a strange evening he's had. Now look at this from Nick Kenny. 105 average, he was absolutely yeah. fantastic, wasn't he? And he wasn't bad against Richard Veenstra at times, but you're 2-0 down and averaging just shy of 100. It just wasn't to be for Nick there, but um, I'm seeing maturity in Nick. Maybe we're not seeing him since my old uh, BDO days, and it's all positives I'm seeing right now, and I think he could bounce back again. Yeah, here. it was a 20-point drop in the average, wasn't it, as you, as you alluded to there. Yeah, it is Nick Kenny against Rob Collins. It's me getting ahead of myself. Uh, but Rob Collins, well, what does he need to do to turn it around then, based on what we've seen so far? He'd be feeling really disappointed. It'd be a really tough ask right now. Um, and it's just whether or not he's got that experience, that tenacity. Someone like Chris Landman, I don't think he'd be cared if he'd lost to. He, he'd just play exactly the same. It'd be interesting to see how Rob reacts there, because really, he should be on four points now. And the fact he isn't, has his head gone down, which is a, a, a real possibility. It is. Well, I'll let you get back downstairs to join uh, your good friend in commentary, Matthew Edgar, who will take you through game six of tonight's ten. We are past the halfway point in the fixtures for this evening. Rob Collins, though, is playing for the third time, and you can see him just stretching himself out there, Glenn Durant, questioning if the 43-year-old from Bognor Regis is feeling a little bit under the weather today. And... Certainly, that stretching out would assume something is amiss. 29-year-old Nick Kenny, the prediction for both myself and Glenn Durant in terms of the group. But Nick Kenny, okay, first, like it's was my to prediction first. Game on. earlier on this evening when I went on the Greyhound show and I had to pick out prime picks, two selections. I gave a little double on that one. I gave you Richard Veenstra for the highest finish. And 40 he did it in the very last shot, 127 in game for the match against Rob Collins. I also picked out Nick Kenny as very good value in this one. And also even looking at giving him Edgar's top tip. Well, you've got to, I suppose, if he's the final leg of the prime picks double. Rob Collins 74. hasn't had it all his own way tonight. You say he's gone ahead and then just not been able to get over the line in his games, but there's no damage done in the legs columns yet for Rob Collins, and I think that is a big factor as well. Because in the group B, you get three players that are going to qualify from the five positions. And a lot of the time, it doesn't just go on the points. We always tend to look over to the legs column. That is the Whoa, second deciding factor. 180! Rob Collins hits his second 180 of the night, his first one of this game. Give him a very strong position here to hold 60. his throw against Nick Kenny. As the guys alluded to on the balcony, 105 average for Nick Kenny. He dropped that down to 85. And he only managed to get four darts in a double in the game against Richard Veenstra. And Richard Veenstra only averaged 83. So he restricted Kenny with ordinary darts. As he loses another one on the floor, just as that replay shown us Robbie on the balcony 62. there, he's lost one out of the treble 20, and you can see the frustration on Nick Kenny's face. Game as Rob Collins, leg. Rob Collins holds his throw in the opening leg, and it was that 180 that really sort of turned that around. He started the leg slow, Nick Kenny kicking off with a Second leg is 140, Nick's first. and then Rob Collins ending that leg really strong. If you can keep that going. You'd expect him to be getting over the line at last. 125. Yeah, Rob Cross has started off these uh, Rob Collins has started off this matches really well so far. Getting in the necessary leads that he required. He just hasn't been able to see out the game, and we could easily be commentating on Rob Collins being on four points for Nick Kenny. I use the word maturity One upstairs. And Kenny, I remembered a couple of issues where had he been scoring a little bit less, he would have showed distress and his demeanour would be a case of flailing his arms all over. But I really like what I'm seeing right now. He's averaging a mere 114 at this moment. Sixty. Yeah, good 
resilience. I've said it a lot. It's a very, very important word, and it's very, very important with darts because you're not going to have it your own way. The game of darts certainly not all the way through. 42. The players are far too evenly matched 36. that you're just going to come here and dominate like he did in his opening game against Landman. Well, perfect example. He won 4-0 against Landman, and he lost 4-0 against Veenstra. Yeah, one thing I could confidently say that no one was going to dominate this Group B. I mean, it's stacked with five, oh, gr five great players, and anyone could win this group. And it will be the fine margins, the kind of finer margins that Rob Collins losing a 3 0 lead and a 3 1 lead 100. will be hurt right now. I was asked upstairs, you know, how is he going to react to this? Well, I don't know his, his personality as well as someone like Nick. It would be very easy, but double 16 here for 1 1. Game show on the second leg. Nick Kenny. He's walking with confidence. A lot of the demeanour with robbers. Just like it's Rob up and down. First. Game on. You could argue Rob's been one of the better players in this group at times, and then he just seems to hit a wall during the game. And I think he's desperate for two points right now, and he could hey, really kick on after that. Well, you mentioned how do you feel he's going to react to this. He's got in big letters across his back, the Man of Steel. My first nickname. Steel is associated with Red Car where I live. And my nickname was the Man of Steel. And I think, isn't it, someone else who's using that name as well? 100. I suppose you were looking for a new nickname, wasn't you, not too long ago? Boring does it, was it? I was going to go for Snorty Locks. In interesting Durant. I do like an ironic nickname, to be fair. You're going to call yourself the Man of Steel and have it plastered across your back in big letters. You've got to be able to take what Rob Collins has gone through today and come back. Fighting Steel, obviously, a very strong material. 44. Nick Kenny for the first time. I've gone a little bit quiet. Just seem to have these moments where they just don't bust. I'm just aim for tops. 128. He didn't like the light. They were stood up, wasn't they? He was worried about that carrying in. No, I still, I still don't think he's... <laughs> I think he's trying to work out what he's just done there. I don't think he's at the races 100%, 44. but Robbie Reguard, 52. I, guess I don't think he's feeling 100% in himself, so credit to him, because he's putting on a fine show here. Game show on the third and Despite whatever Rob happened, Collins. he'd be delighted with that. And Nick Kenny's big concern is, why me? Probably now. Four like Cross does get two points first. on the board. Very de-accelerates that arm. 59. And then really pushes that down with a real a plump, a real push. And replication of that throw has always been key with Nick. I've seen Four, him sort of bring one. his arm out and but it looks clean right now. There we go. I see that de-acceleration there. Just a little cock of the wrist. And that's the one power then hundred. comes in. When he gets that process right, the follow through will look after himself. Whereas that's a lot. Matt was asking for a nice speedy reaction. One hundred and thirty. With Rob and some of the problems he was having is when that deacceleration was just a little bit too slow for them. But it works so much. Can you see that? As if it goes into slow motion there. And then just watch the wrist and the fingers. Then I'll take over. One hundred. Rob's pull back. A lot quicker. No two dart throws are the same. We're all looking for that desired One lipstick. 180! Second max for Rob Collins. Second for Rob, third of the match. And there's been three legs and three darts no, hit at the six. double. So Probably this one, in terms of the numbers, is adding up pretty nicely. 145 would add up nicely if Rob Collins could take this one out. Nice. Happy enough with that he set up. He's left a nice, easy two darter, and he's really put the pressure on Nick here to say, You've got to take this 146 out, pal. 
dare I say, it doesn't look like the type of player this time who's going to throw away a big lead. What a finish this was. Oh, look at Rob. Just keep your eye on the non-throwing player. That's what we go through when we play. He expects, doesn't he? As he's thinking, man, did he think too long there? No, Game he didn't. John the fourth leg. That is an unbelievable 146. And just when Rob was taking total and utter control of this game, the Welsh like captain to throw first. Game takes on. it with a 146 finish. Very, very impressive. From the first start there, you could see Rob Collins' face in the background, expectant on that shot to go in. And Nick Kenny really composed himself well there and levelled up the game. I said it was a shot that was pressurised by that 55 leave of Rob Collins and he responded to it absolutely perfect to keep Edgar's prime pick still in the running. Oh yes, I forgot about that. McKenny win here, isn't it? For a three to one double. Well, please remember if you are following Edgar's prime top tips. Make sure you gamble responsible. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. 45. Twenty-eight. Can you pick a winner from here? So, Nick Kenny's reaction there. When you're looking at the floor, you're just begging to hear oh and shout a two-digit number. And not only was a two-digit number, it was only 28. So, it was a massive come on from him. One. And he backs that up with another match. That's the fourth of this game. And for the first time in this match, it's advantage Kenny. Why did you have to do it to him? 93. You had to do it to Rob Collins as well, didn't you? You had to curse him with the curse of Duzzer. He said, doesn't strike me as the type of guy who's going to throw the lead away this time. And then... Yeah. Are you ridiculing me? 80. I I'm just wondering why you've got to keep cursing the players. Well, someone's got to. We can't all be Edgar's top tips. Well, Chris Murphy said I might be the master of something. I've got to be the master of tips. 40. Oh, he's not just... Require 96. He's left the bogey there. He's just not with it. 96, all about the first dart. Perfect. We've got five darts minimum Game at this, but only needs the, the one. Nick Clinical. Kenny. Nick Kenny. Assured. Mature. This is another great performance from Nick Kenny. See if we get Nick to throw first. Our Game tip on. to top the group tonight. He's looking rather good. Just love that camera angle. I'm turning it right, Matt Edgar Mayana. 100. No, because you're still not getting things right. I'm new to this commentary. I'll get it right one day. Hey, well, these five. guys are getting it right. When it comes to the back end of legs, not a single dart missed at a double yet. And that's reflected in the averages. Both players in the mid-90s, two 180s apiece. Good quality affair, this one. Really good standard. 57. 96. Well, I was asked how he was going to respond, Rob, and even if he does lose this game, he's been over that 100 mark, average-wise, most of the game. Still mid-90s. He is responding with a Aye, attribute of a man of steel. Just some nights, it just doesn't go for you. And mixed with the fact that he's up against opponents of real top quality tonight. 41. And he'd be looking to see this game out now. He'd be thinking nine darts from 259. I think you must have heard me there. Why do you do it, Glenn? He said. Forty one. Nine 
points, he four. A good reply from Collins. Keeps him in this game, but it's in Nick's hands still. One treble minimum here. There's the treble. Anything's a bonus, I used to think, from there. Nines, he six. Couldn't wait to get to the hockey there, Rob. 105. 140. And what a setup that is. Nick and with the darts in the last 22. leg, he's not out of this game. He's only had one big finish. That's not the end of the world. That is. We've yet to see a dart missed at a double in this match 36. from either player. Robbie Reguard, You'd expect 45. Rob Collins here to get two darts. He's had two darts at double so far, hit them both. That is a long way off. And that is a miss as well. So Nick Kenny has 86, Nick require 86. for the match. And Nick Kenny has yet to miss a dart and a double himself. We just said that about Rob Collins and watched him miss two. Nick Kenny will be hoping for two, and he will get two. Rob Collins is expecting once again. He's nodding along. He thinks this one's over. It Go is now. Nick Kenny match. gets over Nick the line Kenny. and puts another two points on the board. A 4-2 victory over Rob Collins. That is Edgar's prime picks of the day. Both landed, and that is your 3-1 to one double. So make sure you join us at 8.25 tomorrow if you want Edgar's double. But Nick Kenny takes the points, and we're coming up next with Richard Veenstra against Chris Landman.
Watkins cannot seem to catch a break tonight, can he, at the Super Series? He goes down for the third time this evening, 4-2 this time, losing out to Nick Kenny, who won 4-0, then lost 4-0, now wins 4-2 with the aid of that 1-4-6 checker and some fine finishing from the Welshman in it, 80% on the doubles in that one for him, looking in very, very good shape. And we can take a look at the Group B table now to show you where the players are. Top two, Veenstra and Kenny. But Veenstra has a game in hand. Kai Van Lund and Chris Landman can also join the pair on four points. But Veenstra will hope to be on six at the end of the next game as he meets his fellow Dutchman Landman for what will be the fourth time this week. Uh, I feel like I've said this before, but I'll say it again anyway. Uh, the pair of them have been battling it out since Monday. Landman winning the match on Monday as he led the Group A table at that stage. Veenstra returning the result on Tuesday, and he led the Group A table at the end of that day. But in the end, they tied on points, finished second and third in the Group respectively, and Landman did win yesterday's meeting, also 4-3. So all of the matches have gone the distance. Maybe we should just toss a coin for this one, but let's play the game instead. Matt Edgar and Glenn Durant will guide you through it. You would think these two are sick to death of each other. They've seen each other on Monday, and honestly, I have to sit with my core commentator. I know exactly how the pair of them are feeling. But absolutely nothing to separate them this week. Always tough to play a travelling buddy, a friend. And like I said, since Monday, they've had battle, battle royal after battle royal. A lot of respect between it. And like I said, we've talked about having a good dance partner, the, the rhythm of both players. You know, just keep an eye on the clock, honestly. It, it's, it'll be a quick fire game, whoever wins. For the group. Chris Landman victory would really squash it all up. Okay, first leg is Richard so Someone's first. going to really take game control on. of this group. If Feenstra win this game, he's making a real statement to go all the way. Well, Chris Murphy said on the balcony, flip a coin. 100. That's pretty much what the bookies have said as well. They're not willing to split them. They're not willing to make a decision. They're handing it over to you. What do you fancy? 100. I'll stick with Veenstra, but like I said, I feel awful saying it with my predictions. 140. Once again, I don't like to... Well, I do like to say it. Of course I like to say it. Edgar's picks has landed again. He's five. still 100% for the week. Not got one wrong. And gave that prediction out earlier on. My nice little double on the racing channel around about 8.25. I'll be on there again tomorrow. I'm going to come and get some tips. 59. Once again, it's Finch. That's come out the traps quickly. Not often we've said that a lot about Landman, but... 130. He's in this leg. I'm just playing every day away from home. And it's just not the fact that they're here from since Monday. Last week they had the World, World Masters as well, so they've probably been on the road for a good... Eight to ten days already. No score. Great record, 147. Yeah, the kind of finishes up. Kind of spark that 43. you need. Richard, you're going 40. Vince has already missed three. I don't know if he's Game missing him again. The first leg. Richard Kings Vainstra. that right in the middle. There's one little Vinstra holding his own throat. Landman won't panic yet. That's Second not in his DNA. To throw first. He just plays one leg at a time, that all adage. Well, if there's ever a fine example no, of Chris Landman three. not panicking, he got absolutely pumped 4 0 by Nick Kenny, who threw 105.47 average, and then came back and beat Kai Fang Lang. 76. In the very next game. This is the third time we'll see him tonight. Same for 140. His third fixture of the night. We've got just a couple of games further to go. Hey, T3. Tomorrow we'll be crowning the winner of this group. And the top three will be moving through to Saturday's final to join Adam Warner. When we come back tomorrow night, we'll also know 
two more players for that lineup from the morning session, Group C. And we're back with you tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. for Stuff TV or the Moses Super Series YouTube channel. And please come and join us Saturday night. 140. Tickets are free. If you're anywhere near Portsmouth. Dartshop.tv. Be great to see you. I know the Dart players would really appreciate that. 130. Is your last chance this year. It will be doors closed and staying closed for 2022. Game that shows closes the second that leg. leg. Chris Land. 15 data to level that one up. You say you won't panic. That is a very good response and a very good Third confirmation of that statement first. from Glenn. Game on. But no panic from Landman. Every time I see Landman hit a double eight, it takes me back to the Isle of Man. And I screamed with delight 60. to hit the winning double to beat Chris Landman in the final for the Isle of Man Open. Prestigious title. Only to find out that I'm blind as a bat. And it wasn't in. 25. And despite all the wins I did have, that's the second most watched video on 98. YouTube. Of mine. The majority watched by Matt Edgar, no doubt. 134. This match is going swinging from one to the other here. But when you get rhythmical players like this, 41. It's usually the case. 57. Oh, that's Richard there. Really grit his teeth at this point. Just not his style. Laid back. Laid back personified right there with this guy. 56. Richard McGuire. He's hardly uptight himself, this landman. Game show on the third leg. Richard Vainstrom. Quality dash. Just under the 100 average mark for Richard. But it's still on four. Well, it's Chris to throw first. I know it's late in the night. But if you... Hey, T5. Any observations, any questions? MSS darts. We're happy to answer anything that you want to chat Nine, about. T5. Anything about the darts tonight, anything about the world champs. You name it, we'll answer it. 58. We've got our... Twitter handles open in front of us here, so you can drop the messages in. 140. I sort of feel now that Rangers is just starting to take control of this match. 140. Be an opportunity to break up here in here with... The trebles, oh, that is harsh. Now, Richard hasn't had many bounce outs, but there's a couple of players this week who have struggled. 134. Richard, you've got 146. Even if that was a single 20, one it would have gave him the Richard opportunity. He just would have needed one treble to get a dart at the ball. And from nowhere, it's two darts, a double 12. Double six. Game show on the fourth it leg. Never looked like being in that Chris leg, but Landman. 140, 134. Fighting quality some landmen. Just as I anticipated. I think it's Richard to throw first. Game on. Richard was going to take control. One hundred. There's been nothing to separate them this week. Sixty. Two good friends battling it. Great camaraderie. But both with that will to win. 45. So there's nothing to separate them. There was nothing to separate them this week. There was nothing to separate them in the odds. There's nothing right now to separate them in the scoreboard. 100. I think the only big factor now we're looking at is a little mark to the right hand side of Richard Veenstra's name. That means. He throws hey, first. He won. He will throw first in this leg and the deciding leg if it goes all the way. And he's just got the vibe of one of those games. There's just going to be seven folds of Getting something separate in your trousers in this comms box this week. Oh, 
will be asking for aircon. 100. Surprised him go for the bull there, Matt. 59. It's always a concern for me that they're not 100% thinking and just focusing in on the Leonard Gate set. My counters are always that bad. I'm just in the total zone of Aye, power scoring. Three. Christian McCall, 148. That's 148 from Landman. That's the perfect setup for him for double 14. Game and that is an unbelievable leg. finish from Chris, Chris Landman. Landman. 148. And from absolute nowhere, has taken full control of this match. Sick leg is Chris now. to throw first. Game on. This would really crunch up that group. Just as Fincher was threatening to run away with it. 100. Yeah, that prediction came straight from the Glen Durant playbook, that one, wasn't it? Oh, I think it's going to be seven holds a throw. Bang. There's a break for Landman, and he's now throwing for the match. And that 55 for Vainstra will be music to the ears of Chris Landman. 140. So been waiting for the tones of Owen Binks. 59. He's best of sevens. That's what I've learned about. 60. More the Super Series just when people are taking control. Sometimes it's a little bit different. You get two players like this is out of nowhere, really, for Landman. 64. And he only takes a couple of seconds to throw his three darts. 60. In the sixth leg, and only nine minutes 60. have been played. You could watch these. They were best of 21 comfortably. 140. Best Great of 21 brings a 141. Oh, Chris Landman he took the 148 out to give him this opportunity. He needs a treble. 45. Ooh. Mm. That's slack. 59. But not punished. 196. And that's about as much emotion as you'll get from Richard Veenstra. 56. Richard well Jibber set up from Landman. 24. But the king of big finishes this week has been Richard Veenstra. And he needs treble 18 if the trend's going to continue. 56. Christian Rickwine, 40. Landman from nowhere, really. That's a great marker. Game and shot very on the very comprehensive match. victory Chris for Landman. Chris Landman over his good friend and fellow Dutchman Richard Veenstra. There were times was just beginning to show signs they was going to run away with this group. The rest of the players will be happy with that scoreline. It's Chris Landman who moves on to four points. All to play for now.
Welcome back. Final three fixtures of the evening about to get underway. Before the break, we saw Chris Landman win the Dutch derby against Richard Veenstra. A 4-2 success for the countryman who averaged less than Veenstra in the game but hit half of his checkout attempts, including a fabulous 148 finish. Uh, speaking of fabulous finishers, Nick Kenny is coming up next. He's been excellent in that department tonight and he, he is in a very good position in the Group B table. The Welshman is sitting second level on points with Veenstra who's just been beaten so now has a chance to go top with three wins from his four matches tonight he takes on Kai Fan Lung who's had a, a mixed evening uh, but as I was saying Kenny has produced some fine finishing over the course of the night himself including this wonderful 146 and Kenny he won a match 4-0 lost the match 4-0 and then he completed this combo against Rob Collins make sure he was ready to execute and it would have been even more painful for Collins stood behind him there he's had a painful night so far as the Man of Steel Kaifan Lug has produced some decent stuff himself very interesting evening for him I spoke to Glenn Duran earlier on he said he'd maybe got away with one and then had one ripped away from him so probably uh, in about the right position for his level so far this evening now both of these had decent weekends in the Netherlands uh, last week the pair have actually played each other a couple of times this year as well including in the Viking Cup semi-finals a tournament set up in tribute to the late great Andy Fordham and Nick Kenny won that one let's see who wins this one in the company of Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar yeah, the league table's beginning to take shape a little bit now. And it would really be really be bunched up if Kai could win this game here. For me, Nick's been the player of the night. His averages, his finishing have been really good. And I think he'll be the one person who's delighted to see Richard Vintra lose that game there because he has the eyes on this prize of finishing in the top three here. And a lot of the hard work can be done on day one. But he'll still have to come back and... Do plenty of work for tomorrow. And once again, after the Dutch derby, good friends playing each other in the last game. Nick Kenny and Kai are travelling partners on the WDF circuit, so you have to put that to one side and just focus on them two points. But they both seem very smiley, hey, first, like happy. It's Nick to throw first. There's a lot of respect there Game with each on. other. Big opportunity, I feel, here for Nick Kenny. Not only just to get top of the table but to really put himself in a position to get one foot through the door for Saturday night's final 100. there are three places available so if you win day one top of the table you're going to have to have to have a very poor day in day two in order not to qualify Adam Warner knows all about qualification he's through he'll be bringing through some of the Sheffield University lads they'll be Making the long trip down to Portsmouth. Need to cheer on Adam. 135. Sheffield Steel. Will the man of steel be there, Rob Collins? We haven't seen the best of Kai tonight. Is this the game where he really shows us? Because he's in 100. good form right now. And is this the game where he sort of shows everybody what he's actually made of? He's using the 19s there because that one treble there. As you see, the finishers now, they're the 170, the finish we all love. It's even better when it's for the match, isn't it? The 170. I've never, ever done Well, I was close against Gary Anderson, but that takes some doing. Imagine. 91. Imagine getting a 170 to win a match against Gary Anderson. That would be unheard of, I guess. Well, they've both got an opportunity here. Nick Kenny got first poke. He's missed his. Kai Fang Lang got a chance at a 170 himself, which ironically, the day I did 60. beat Gary Anderson with a 170 finish, one, I played Kai Fang Lang in the first round, and he missed tops for a 160 finish to have put me out. How do you remember these things? Because I really wanted to beat Gary Anderson that day because I'd lost to him a couple of days 56. previous. 56. So I remember that day very clearly. Mm. Yeah, 170 finish to beat Gary Anderson. I don't know if I've ever...
never mentioned that before. Double 15. Not the nicest of doubles, well, double 15. 114. Considering double 16 is many people's favourites. I'll be happy with that. I was looking forward to watching Kai tonight, but this is his C game. And he's still right in the mix. 38. But hasn't Nicky gone as planned, 30. that's for sure. And seeing Chris Landman win there, the opportunity of being top three overnight would look slim if Nick Kenny wins this game. So, talked about double 15 not being a great double. He much prefers two darts at double eight instead. Game shot in the Turns first. Turns out to be the right decision. Nick Kenny. That also demonstrates two things. One, he's thinking clearly. And two, he's a man of confidence. Second, it's Kai to throw first. Game on. He's got good focus and determination about him today. He did take that defeat to Richard Veenstra, but no, other than six. that, it's been pretty solid from Nick Kenny. Came out of the traps flying. 105 average in his opening game. I do feel, though, that that opening game that Chris Landman match was probably a pace that he really appreciated. The speed of the game that allowed us to see the best of Nick Kenny, where I just think with a game like this against Kai Fang, he might just be having a bit more processing time than he'd have hoped. He's been at the back of the stage now for quite some time for a dart player, and Kai Fang's only thrown one dart. 140. You see, racing to the board, he started the action. He had to slow down the process to allow Kai Fang to get out of the way there. You just feel like Nick wants to get on with this a little bit quicker than Kai Fang's letting him. Yeah, you feel Kai Fang 130. is dictating the pace right now. I'm not going to show anyone who's, who doesn't know Kai too good. He was a heck of a lot slower than this before. In fact, he used to throw a pretend dart. So he used to throw four 61. darts. He would stand behind you and throw a practice one, walk to the hockey, throw a practice one, and then throw his three darts. Forty-four. Yeah, I think we've been spoilt this week, haven't we, with so many quick players? One hundred and thirty-four. This is a proper match play game. Neither speedy on the hockey. They both know exactly where that treble twenty is. Is he going to fill it up? 180! Well, he requires 70. What was looking quite appealing, the 70. All of a sudden, it's a must hit. Nice, clean, fat 20 for double 16. 54. Dare I say, that felt a little 47. rush, that last dart. I don't expect Nick to miss. It probably means he will. Double 14 seems to be the double for tonight. Game shot in the second. Maybe that's the reason. Nick Kenny. He's looking really, really good, is Nick Kenny. We did champion early doors. and feel like it's Nick to throw first. He's our chosen player to top the group. Game on. Right at this precise moment, that's looking good. Yeah, that was a cracking 180 there to really apply the pressure at the back end of that leg, and he bought himself the opportunity and took it. The 180's been good from Nick Kenny tonight. He's hit at least one in all of his games so far. He hit two in his opener. He hit two in his last game with Rob Collins. He hit one in 4 0 defeat to Richard Veenstra. He's hit one in this game as well. So, 100. Good return there for Nick Kenny over his four matches. Yeah, I think Kai will be looking. <laughs> At least for two wins today, and then kick on. And the last person he wants to see in his last game is Richard Veenstra. 100. Even though he's 2 0 down here. He's given everything to get something out of this match. I think this makes Nick Kenny very, very. 
Z9. Not really sure what happened there. Well, the one thing we can say about Nick Kenny is that 9 to 2, we spoke about that 9 to 2 tip we gave earlier on in the day. And winning this group, if he wins this match, that will well and truly be gone. You'll get nothing like a 9 to 2 tomorrow. Four, do you four? Yeah, I never finished what I was saying that how dangerous Nick Kenny could be for Saturday night. Adam Warner. First person there. Maybe. I think he likes to study players no, to see how he might need me still watching now. Hopefully he's got an early night. But Nick could be very, very dangerous. Well, he did go to university, didn't he? He studied journalism. Adam Warner, Sheffield University. So he might be using them journalistic skills to try and do a bit of scouting. 90. Just gone a little bit quiet in this game. For Nick, it's about focus right now. Looks like the one thing he's doing is looking all over the place. I don't think he was particularly happy with the, with the hockey the earlier. 142. Now he's looked in the air. He's undecided which way to go. We've seen treble 17 a lot, but I think he'll go the traditional treble 20 route. T4. Oh, yeah. 152. He's got that bit of steel about him. You might have heard that get in there. And once again, just when you think someone's taking full control. It's not in, boys. I thought it turned on to Strictly Come Dance in there. Hey, T5. Nicky Require 58. Yeah, Nick, can you prowling round the back of the stage trying to look over the shoulder like a meerkat once the opportunity of the 58 he's got it gives it the full kevin painter comes back for tops he's come quite south from there 38 a little bit too far south he requires so 67 opportunity presents itself for kaifan to get the break of throw back he's a Type of finishes he's been getting tonight. Stealing legs. And also tops. 27. Like I say, he's been stealing Nick those legs tonight. 20. So Nick will be delighted if that didn't go on the double. Just feel like he's lost his rhythm a little bit. He's looking about all over. I could say one thing to him now is just focus on that dartboard. Whatever's on your mind there. Game shot the third. Focus on that target. Because it's 3-0 up. It's yours to lose right now. Four flag, it's Kai to throw first. Game on. We have seen a 3 0 lead get turned around. And that was by Kai Fan. When he took on Rob Collins, Rob Collins raced into a 3 0 lead. Kai Fan turned it around. Fifth, with a 4 3 victory. So you've seen the six players this week now, Matt. Who's impressed you most? And is that the same player who you think will go on to win it? I've been impressed with two people, actually. The first one was Adam Warner, because I don't think any of us really expected that. I was also really impressed with Alex Small this morning. Really like what I saw with him, and I'm looking forward to seeing him tomorrow morning, see if he can get the job done. He's in a very, very good position. I'd expect him to get the job done, but we have seen some crazy things happen on a Friday here at the Super Series, because... There is a lot of prize money up for grabs on the weekly basis. And for some of these players, it could help them make decisions. You mentioned, I believe, was it Richie Parkin who got through and he used the money to enter Q school? Yeah, did you say that today? Put that on social media. He got his winnings from the Motor Super Series and invested into Q school. Otherwise, Nine, he wouldn't have gone. The fish factory worker. Never really believed in himself to really travel around and sort of relied on qualification routes for the BDO, etc. But what the Motor Super Series has given him real belief. I think the winner of this week could be looking out with this group of a Nick Kenny or Richard Veenstra.
as impressive as I was of Adam. Looking forward for his friends coming up. There's no better feeling on a Saturday night with a good crowd in here. Dartshot.tv. Tickets are free. That's a wonderful setup. 49. You can do no more. Average in the mid 90s. Yeah, it's been a good leg this one from Nick Kenny. Three one forties in the scoring phase has just bought him this time. He had the advantage of throw. And now we'll 79. be looking to get the advantage of points. Nick, you require thirty two. Table. Going for a dozy door. Or a little rumba. 16. Can you require 112? Okay, I stole one game from 3 0 down today. This would be a bigger shock. It can still be done. Treble 19. Let's see. Nick is itching to get back. It's just not to be for Kai tonight. Once again, 28. He's not feeling 100%. He didn't give any excuses. He never would. He's not that type 16. of person. But for Nick, they might be good friends. There's no friendship on the hockey, but that's the only thing that concerns me. Very fidgety. It's double eight for a 4 0 win. Game shot and, and the pings match. It in. Kai will be Nick magnanimous Kenny. in defeat. He'd be disappointed in defeat. But a perfectly executed 4 0 victory. A whitewash win, which might surprise Nick Kenny over his good friend Kai Fan Lung. He's beginning to take control of this group and will already be looking for one of them top three places. But no Nick, he'll want top spot. The penultimate game of the night Chris Landman, Rob Collins coming up next.
This is the Motor Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And this Saturday is the last finals night before Christmas. So get yourself down if you can, based in Portsmouth, the live lounge. Tickets are absolutely free via dartshop.tv. Always a good night. And it's been a good night this evening for Nick Kenny, the Welshman, uh, completing his night's work with another whitewash victory, bookending the night with 4-0 wins. This one against Kai Fan Lung, who we will see again in the last match of the session. He'll take on Richard Bainstra in that one. But Nick Kenny in a good position in the Group B table going into tomorrow's action. Top of it on six points and can only be tied with at the end of play tonight. Uh, coming up next, though, is Chris Landman and Rob Collins. And it's a big match for Collins in particular, having failed to pick up any points so far this evening. Uh, Landman has been a decent... Uh, participant in the group so far in the series so far this week has played in group A and group B looking to make it to the finals group and he produced this fabulous finish in victory over his fellow Dutchman Veenstra earlier tonight as for Rob Collins well he's had his moments he's got to three legs in a couple of his games 3-1 and 3-0 earlier on hasn't been hammered by any stretch of the imagination by any of his opponents but still to pick up a point. However, he's very experienced in this format. He knows that getting through night one with a couple of points and it's not a lost cause, not getting any might be. So huge game for him, I think. What do you think, Glenn Durant and Matt Edgar? I think you've put that absolutely perfectly well, as always, Chris. It's uh, nice to see Rob was smiling there. I couldn't help while you were talking, just, just watching him about there. He could have easily been sulking with them first couple of games and I was quite impressed. You can clearly see he's not 100%. It doesn't take anybody. But he's here. He's, he's working hard and he's not given up by any stretch of the imagination. And I admire him for that. But he's just up against the wrong type of person here because Chris won't care if he's playing a family member or Rob Collins in the last game of the night. You know, it's, he just plays the board, does Chris Lambman. And, you know, if you're going to beat him, you're going to have to play well. So, yeah. He'll give it his best shot. Okay, first leg, it's Chris had a lot of luck. First. It's just the moment his Game luck changes. On. Well, there is obviously another old expression, isn't there? That a man makes 60. his own luck. And he's carved out opportunities. He's took leads. He's not been able to get over the line. 100. Still looking for his first points. I do feel like he's done enough to suggest 100. that he could take the victory here. And upset the odds, upset the favourite here, Chris Landman. 99. I think he's a good friend of Chaz Barstow. I heard him mention him there as I walked in the players' lounge. 45. Chaz, another amazing play. He's set some massive averages in the past couple of years. Big fan of the Modus Super Series is Chaz. Superb player. 162. There's a new one for Owen. I'd still be counting myself. 50, 95. Probably record 140. I might be wrong, but I think he's won the first leg of every game he's played tonight. I think the story for Rob is that he's just unable to see out the matches. Will that trend continue? 57. Robbie required 20. And what I would say about Chris Lambham as we see this double five. Game shot on the first leg. Through that last dirt with a bit of points. purpose, but Chris Lambham does have the tendency to 
Took off the boil in one of his games. Now, albeit he did lose 4 0 early so doors. That was more the fact that Nick Kenny was absolutely unbelievable in that game. And the last thing Chris would want after that great victory over Richard Veenstra. 16. Is not to follow that up. And he's a little bit below par here. Eight, he won. And this is an important game for Rob. If he loses this, he's lost all his games tonight. He'll literally have to go through the card tomorrow and still. That might not be Fifty enough. Eight. It should give him a good, strong chance. But the leg difference will come into play. But I suppose looking back through his score hey, lines, he's he kept won. it tight. He only lost 4-3 in his opening two games. He only lost 4-2 to Nick Kenny. So he's not took a big defeat. If he could get a big win here, 100. I don't expect him to win 4-0. But if he was to win 4-0, he'd actually get that legs column back to zero. And that would keep him in the running because he's actually kept those legs quite together. Yeah, you don't expect Lambman to go four legs without playing more. He's been well below path until that 140. 81, 81, 140, and he's back in the bed. He should go downstairs with his last 99. dart. And I emphasise that because he very, very rarely uses that 19 bed. But of course, on 199, made total sense. It's a lovely setup play from Rob. He's average in excess of 90 at the moment. Double 10. Game show and when the you are bottom left. of the table, Chris you Lander. are left yourself with a double. More often than not, you'll watch your opponent hit the three-figure finish. And it's 1-1. One, one. Game on. And Lamman takes control of this game. 100. Don't forget, we're back here for Group C in the morning. 9.30 a.m. Alex Small, top of the table. Looked really good. Brimming with confidence, five. even before a dart was thrown today. His interview, he was here, he was here to win it. All the headlines was made hey, by Leonard Gates, but when I left the building this afternoon, he looked a little bit disappointed because I think he had his weekend mapped out. Qualifying through Group C, getting to Saturday night, travelling down to Ali Pali on Sunday and playing on Monday night. So he's got a lot of work to do. You may see a top tip from Edgar tomorrow. Fancies that uh, Leonard Gates could go through the card. 140. And he might just need that to qualify. Yeah, I think we've seen enough from him over the years to suggest that if anyone's going to do it, he's going to be capable of that, especially in that group. I'd be concerned Aye, about the game with Alex Small. I've been very impressed with him. And he seems to be someone I don't see wavering too much. I didn't see Landman wavering too much in this one, and he wants tops. 27. I mean, we're going 95. Matt Collins got another opportunity. Break the throw. It's going to be double eight. And that is right on the wire. When you tell you about 40. the unlucky side or that Game closeness, those Chris two Lander. darts summarise everything there. Well-thrown dart, literally on the wire. He couldn't have got any closer. And then the very next dart that well, hits the board is Chris Landman's dart that puts him 2-1 ahead. I've seen that a lot this week with Landman, hasn't he? The way he... One hundred and four. I just ask him about that while he squeezes that non-throwing arm. I don't think it's because it's cold, which was one of me options, because it's a lot warmer in there tonight. I wanted boiling hot on Saturday night, and how do we get that? That's with a great crowd in here. Forty-five. Our last competition of the year. It'd be fantastic to get you here, cheering the guys on. Five grand to the winner. One hundred. Place in Champions Week for twenty thousand pounds. I thought you was going to say Christmas jumper. Which twenty. We'd like to see you wear on Saturday night. Come down here, make it very festive down here at the Super Series. I will have my Christmas Day shirt on. One hundred. Second appearance only comes out on Christmas Day. It will come out on two days. The last day of the Moda Super Series and then Christmas. How long have you had it? One hundred and forty oh, years now. But <laughs> 
I've only wore it a couple of times. Once a year, hey, then it goes back in five. the cupboard. Robbie Brook, 152. Ninety four, Christian for corner one hundred and sixteen. This for a decisive lead. Double eighteen. Game shot in the four flat. Exactly what it Chris is now. Rob about. Collins cleared for no luck. Absolutely no luck whatsoever. Chris I don't think I've ever seen anyone potentially have a, a four nil return. Could be on four to six points. One hundred. Definitely speeded up all of a sudden as well. Too much to the like of a fellow co commentator Three, here. He just needs a bit of speed in the arm, you feel, Six don't you? Because it just stops that the push. It just stops the need of that extra muscle coming in. Those landmen, it's just like a lob, isn't it? It's just the Hasn't 64. changed since the first dart you threw on Monday morning. Just a lob. Very effective lob. 180. To be fair, I don't think his face has changed since Monday. It's literally just stone-faced, isn't it? Very good point. And, and Vinci, you could argue the same. Those in eyes, the way they look at that treble. There's not a lot of emotion you, you get for the two Dutch lads. Very effective, and it's job well done for Landman tonight. 47. I think I might have made a mistake. My original three was the two Dutchies and Nick Kenny. And I changed my mind when Nine, I did my research Richard on Kai. It looked like he was 14. banging form, but he, he's been quite disappointed tonight, this Kai Fan Lung. But he has got that chance tonight. 94. In the final game of the night, up next with Richard Veenstra. Sixty match darts for Landman. 20. And he lands it the in the double ten. Chris Rob Collins Landman. has done all he can really. He's had two averages around about the ninety mark today, and it's not been enough to get him any points. Chris Landman gets himself six points. That is his third win of the day, and Richard Veenstra is going to be hoping to join him in the next game when he takes on Kai Fang Lang.
I think it's safe to say it has been a night to forget for Rob Collins here at the Super Series, losing all four of his matches on the first night in Group B on this eighth week of Series 2. Going down 4-1 to Chris Landman there in the penultimate match of the session. A 92 average for Landman, 116 checkout and 57% in that department. Uh, this is how it affects the Group B table as we approach the halfway stage of the group. Landman levels with Nick Kenny on six points and Richard Veinstra is looking to do the same thing when he faces Kai Fan Lung in the last match of the night. If Lung can get the victory though, it would leave him in a very good position himself. The pair of them are about to do battle practicing behind me right now. Kai Fan Lung has had a mixed evening so far. Uh, he did beat Rob Collins earlier on, coming back from 3-0 down in that one. Veinstra has had a little bit of a, a, a better night so far, but they could end up on the same points, as I mentioned. Here he is taking out 93 against Nick Kenny, the only player to beat Nick Kenny so far tonight. So victory for Veinstra, as I said, would see him level the lead with Landman and Kenny. A win for Fat Beauty would keep things very interesting going into the final session in this group. Let's get the last game of the evening underway. From one Fat Beauty to another. From Kai Fan Lung to Glenn Durant. Well, Matt cracks that one. Group A was all about the separation of the six players. It's split right down the middle. And Group B is beginning to show signs of that. If Richard Feenstra wins this one, top three would look a long, long way away hey, from Kai, Kai to throw first. and Rob Collins. Game so on. a big game for Richard Feenstra here. For, Ka for Kai already, despite it being day one, a must-win win. 27. Yeah, the group sort of gone how we expected, didn't we? Thought that Nick Kenny would sort of get out the way of all the hustle and bustle of it. We thought Rob Collins would struggle. And it was sort of between Kai Fang Veenstra and Chris Landman to fight out for the other two places. 100. What I'm watching for here is, for me, this guy's in better form. This guy is shown he's the better player tonight. 59. But will he struggle with the pace of Kai? That's the one thing to look out for. And Kai's a real gritty fighter, a, a real grind. It's not been his night, but he could still end up on level point no, with Richard Finster with all to play for tomorrow. So don't write anyone off here. But if I had a shilling, one it would be on that man there. 180. That how tight you are that you've still got shillings in your pocket. I'm not tight. 27. Had the production team backing me up there. That leaves 82. He should be looking at Bull or Treble 14. 105. And that leaves a two dark combination. This would be a break of throw as well. Like I said, Kai's just not at the races right now, but he's a fighter. 100. Richard, you're going to use every one of them qualities right now. So for Richard. That leaves 23. It's all about focus now. It's very easy when you're following your mate at pace. Even that was a little bit too close for comfort. 41. Kai Reguire, 150. This would hurt. This would hurt. One hundred and nine. Richard you requires sixteen. After a long day. Owen continues. There's Game a one hundred and nine the call out there, and I'm still Richard adding them up as we Vincho. go along, but it's Richard Vinch who takes a one nil lead. Second against Richard to throw first. Okay, sixteen Game data. On. His thought process right now is hold my throw. That's the only thing. Fifteen data. Let me move 26. on. 26. 
Feels like a tired throw from Richard. Four days of continuous darts. Fave V7. Clarifying was a PDC tour card holder. We lost that card. He went to get it back. I believe it got quite close. Do you want to have a look at how close Third he got V6. in that? Q school. I believe he was like a game or so away. We'll look back at his Q school record and we'll update you. Fave D8. Obviously, he's had the year this year under WDF. Qualifies for their World Championship at Lakeside. Fifty seven. Q school took place in January in Milton no, Keynes, a two six. phase event. Kai Fan has he lost his tour card, got to enter at the second phase. Which is the last one hundred and twenty eight players. Ninety five. Ninety six. I was, uh, I was trying to tee it up. I, I'll spoil the I'll spoil the surprise for you. Kai fans run ended to a hundred and seven average. Hit by someone sat not too far away from you right now. Hey, T3, Richard, you've got 146. So you made me look all the way down there to boost your ego. Exactly that, yeah. 46. Oh, you've got 112. I'll stare that. 41. <laughs> Richard, you require 100. Richard, normally really good around this area. He has been the king of the big finishes today. But on this occasion, he just set it up. Quite he requires not 71. even just today, he's been the big f finishing king. All week. Oh, that's a great dart. Two darts at double 16. A long way away with the first. He's moved across. Unable to find it after Richard a great first start, he'll be very disappointed with that one. And he's teed up the opportunity for Richard Veenstra Game to confirm second, uh, the break Richard of throw. Veenstra. And Richard Veenstra has doubled his lead. He's, he's looking at pushing himself firmly but into like that top to three. First. Game on. And if he can stay in that top three by the end of tomorrow, he will be moving through Saturday night's final. There's a big separation. Now, though, Matt, if uh, Richard wins this game, top three on six points and then Kai on two. We normally get something happening in Group B on the... Hey, not normally so as straightforward as that, but that's probably the biggest separation I've seen on a, on a Thursday night going into the final night. I'm qualifying. Well, on the final 60. night, what we'll do is we'll flip the fixtures around. So tomorrow, the first game you'll see will be this one. Kai Van Land versus Richard Veenstra. And if Veenstra gets the win here, and then he beats Kai Fang tomorrow, that'll 96. be Veenstra Kai Fang would only be able to reach eight. Veenstra would then be on eight. Forty. the legs... That'll be in his favour. He will be joining Adam Warner. 100. Still all to play for in the morning. We're back in at 9.30. Looking forward to that. It's all about Alex, isn't it, that group? Uh, no, moment. I disagree. I think it's all about Leonard Gates. And you've said that, to be fair, most of the day. I think it's how he performs. I've pretty much got Alec qualifying, which is probably, Nine, the, probably the poison chalice on that young man. But for me, it's all about how Leonard performs. 
surprise with a 2 3 and that amazing throw of Jeffrey Bakema. It was all about Alex in terms of the group 60. winner. Yeah. Richard, you're going 124. Getting up there. Richard Bean just took these sort of finishes out for fun. He took a 1 2 7 out in the opening Nine, game. That was for the match. Guy require 100. Top tip double. This could get him going. Double 10. Just press the reset button. Can him that Kai does when he wants a double. 90. Just not unite. Richard, you require 25. He's got serious fed upness right there as he walks by. The most placid, nicest guy you could meet on the dart circuit, but I think he's frustrated as anyone. It'd be even, even worse now because leg. Richard, Richard Vainstra pings that double eight with the last dart, and that's going to hurt. And just keep your eye on Kai there because well, look, it's Richard to throw first. He's not happy. Game he's on. probably coming tonight thinking I've got one heck of a chance. I'm playing really well, backed up by his performance in Holland last week. But right now. Whoa. It looks only one winner. Yeah, he'll be disappointed. Both players will be disappointed in terms of the numbers here, but the only number that's going to matter, well, there's two numbers that's going to matter for Richard Veenstra. That is 57. four, which is the amount of legs that he wants to reach, and two, which is the amount of points that he will be rewarded if he does reach that four legs, and he's kicked hey, off with a maximum. I found with a trebleless visit. Just really confirm the advantage Richard Beanstra has got in this last leg. That's good darts from Kai Fan. Really struggled at times in this game. Struggled at times tonight. We've definitely not seen the best of him, but he's going to be in the running still. 100. Going into tomorrow. So we'll be hoping that he can find a bit more form. Long way back in this one. Beanster on the Della. The shot he used 1983 39. to win the Richard, Lakeside 38. World Championship. It's Eric Bristow. Beanster won't be taking out the Della. 58. He has set up a nice little 80. At 80. He's going to have more pressure on it than he would have expected. A maximum visit there. 71. Kai Fang Lana, 171. But it's two darts at the double for Veenstra. Game and shot. On the second the time Richard of asking, Veenstra. Richard Veenstra gets the double on the double five. He gets the points, and that is a big, big victory, not just in terms of. Of the points there for Richard Veenstra, but the legs. A 4 0 victory there over Kai Fang Lang to wrap up the day. That will be your first fixture tomorrow when we come back at 10 o'clock tomorrow night for the conclusion of Group B. If Richard Veenstra can get a win there, that is him through to Saturday night's final. Great way to end the night for Richard Veenstra, but not if you are Kai Fang Lang. Yeah, exactly right, Glenn. A fantastic way for Veenstra to end the evening and three players with three wins from four yes we've talked about separations this week haven't we and uh, group a sort of opened up like a pack of cards and surprisingly uh, group, group b's done the same and uh, i think the way the three players are playing right now it's going to be tough for either kai or rob to you know to overtake them yeah it's going to be very very difficult it's very rare that we get this situation yeah. in group b isn't it that it looks like we're going to know which three are going through at such an early stage it's certainly a first for me. I've, I was really looking forward to tonight. You know, there's nothing going to separate them. The fact that three are on six points doesn't surprise me. It's the two, and especially Kai. You know, when you do a little bit of research on the players, you can see he's banging form, but he wasn't at the races today. Yeah, we have seen players go, of course, and reverse at a bad night. We've seen players lose all four and then win all four. But in this group, with the quality of the top three, do you see that being a possibility? I think in the personalities, Chris Landman, Richard Veenstra, they, they don't even know who they're playing at times. It's just one leg at a time. They, they don't give much emotion away. I don't see them. 
He's, and, and Mick Kenny is, is he's matured. And I've been really, really impressed with him, and I think he can go on. He can be a really dangerous commodity come Saturday night. Right, I won't keep you any longer because you've got to be back with us early in the morning, as have you. 9:30 a.m. Group C uh, will conclude. This group will be back on air at 10 p.m. on Friday night. Do join us for more action here at the Motor Super Series.